G'day guys, it's Clint here from WaterPro and I'm here with Tim Harper from Space Capsule Garden Co. And today we are recording episode number eight of The Full Landscape. This is a doozy. We uh, go in all sorts of directions. We talk about uh, Tim's business and um, the, I guess his previous experiences, a little bit of philosophy, a little bit of psychology, um, a little bit of everything. So um, pour yourself a large cup of tea and sit back, relax and enjoy this. Part of the reason that I wanted to, um, well, I wanted to talk to you was, I guess, to understand more about your history and what you do now. But um, I guess the great thing about the podcast platform is there's no real rules around it and. Um, if you want to talk about something, you talk about something, and if people listen to it, they listen to it, and if they don't, they don't. Um, <clears throat> I try to bring value to our audience. Obviously, the, the majority of the audience are going to be landscape business people, but who knows? Um, we've got a, a Russian fan, I think, where there was a SoundCloud SoundCloud listener. Actually, if you are listening in Russia, can you just comment underneath any of our platforms, please? I'd love to know how that hat came about, but yeah, we've got to follow it in Russia. So um, I guess for everyone listening, I'm here with... Tim from Space Capsule Garden Co. Do you want to give us a brief introduction around your business and I guess the elevator pitch? Yeah, well, well, brief. That's the tricky part. Don't be so. brief, then I'll just sit here and drink my tea. Yeah, you just drink, drink your coffee. Hang on, I'll just join you for a second. I survive on coffee. So, came out of school, did a diploma of sound engineering, yep. which um, turned out to be more of a hobby than a career. Uh, from there, sort of, uh, so... Immediately after school, so 18, 19, through to about 20, you know, mucking around with music, recording, sound engineering, um, spending any money I earned on musical equipment. Um, clearly didn't have much of a direction that I really wanted to go in. Um, I mean, that all came from liking music and not knowing what to do for work. Uh, after that, experienced unemployment for a little while. Um, uh, met my current wife. Well, she's my only wife. <laughs> <laughs> the only wife she knows about. <laughs> pretty, uh, yeah, pretty much. Shout, uh, out, shout out to the missus. <laughs> and she, yeah, she's a teacher and a parent had a job labouring for his landscaping business, just yep. a small business, two or three people. Uh, gave that a shot. Did that for about two and a half years. Yep. Um, enjoyed it. I mean, I was young and knew everything. So this is still mid-20s or early 20s? Yeah, yep. for about 23 Yep. Yeah, I remember knowing yeah. everything at 24. Yep, thought the boss was just the worst person in the world. Yep. Um, who's since passed away. And um, I suppose with age, I look back and, and think I was half the problem with the with tension, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it takes two to tango, doesn't it? Exactly. And I think, well, he gave me an opportunity. He gave me a full-time job. Um, and that's got me to where I am today. So I'm, I'm a bit... It's, it's probably the one thing that lingers is the fact that yep. i was probably a bit of a a pain in the neck yeah and you can't now go back and have that conversation yeah but yeah i appreciate that he gave me my start so did that for a while amongst as i said being an all i thought I'll, I'll look around for another job yep. opportunity came up in aged care so i switched over worked for an organization for in, in aged care doing so i was work. employed as as the gardener yep. so they'd had contractors um, and just didn't feel like the the real care factor was there with yep. who they were using. So they employed me as a full-time gardener slash landscaper. Um, and for nearly 10 years, I worked there just upgrading, maintaining, um, which was good because I basically got, if I wanted to try a technique of landscaping or something, I'd suggest it. And they like, yep, no worries. Here's a budget and we'd build it. So Was this on a single location? Or were you no, they for- had, so they had a head office five sort of uh, aged care facilities yep. and a series of independents. So um, that's challenging. Yeah, it was itself. challenging. And <clears throat> it was, the problem was in the early days, they were so enthusiastic about me um, upgrading gardens. Yep. Um, the maintenance was falling behind because it was just me at the mm. time, mowing all the lawns by hand too. And every and all those sites. And all those sites. If it was one site with 180 units, you kind of just do what yep. you got to do. So eventually you can sort of, we agreed after about a year, we brought over a full-time, a second full-time person, which, as it turns out, was someone I'd worked for in the previous job. 
<laughs> <laughs> so now your former boss is no not my boss uh really like who someone who'd become oh, a pretty good with. friend yep. and he was ready to come across providing it was a full-time job yep. um i was like hang on not only were you questionable with this former employer you then poached one of their staff i poached the best staff member yep. but you know he's still in that job and it's good for him because it's you know it's a stable income yep. he's got kids too yep. um ultimately it'd be nice to re-poach him one more time to come and work for me but i'm not at that point yet <laughs> um so then yeah so that's what mid-20s yep so 2000 oh, so you did that for 10 years yeah oh, so that ended you up at space capsule pretty much so i started uh the last three years of of that job i i studied landscape design part-time mm-hmm. so it was one day a week for on and off for those three years and was that supported by them like so they'd say yep. yeah that's fine you can do four days a week one day study yeah, yeah we luckily i came to an agreement with them that they would pay me um so i was still working five days a week yep. um but i i i paid i uh how did it work i paid the fees yep. um but they covered they essentially let me go on that day um for yep. work uh, with the condition when I finished, I didn't leave within 12 months. Okay, so they got the 12 months. They got the 12 months, and but as it day. turned out... <laughs> well, we'll get to the Melbourne <laughs> showgarden thing yep. afterwards, but I I then tried... I dropped back to three days a week to yep. try and build my own business, yep. which was Space Capsule Landscape Design. Um, anyone that's done that, it just doesn't work. You, you know, can't just be that half-pregnant kind of analogy. I, I get it. Yeah. I can't. I say, oh, I'll, can you finish this job off tomorrow? Like, no, well, you just I've have to wait to five work. days. I've yeah. got another job. Yeah. Um, tried to do that for a while uh, with mixed success. And as that was growing, I was losing the love of the other job. And, I, you know, when you're working with, um, you know, age or elderly people and you're building relationships with them, if I didn't feel like I could give them what I should. Hmm. They deserve everything with their their gardens and i was just well their losing gardens the passion a big part of their lives and it's their final years exactly a lot of for a lot of these I've, I've done a little bit of work with aged care for a lot of them that's that's their space that's all they've got yep. they've got their, their four walls and their front and back garden if they're lucky yeah so, but and even more so my experience within the nursing homes of like the dementia areas and what that means to someone that you know a lot of people their family just they don't essentially see loses touch and never comes in and i might be the only person they see um yep. outside of carers outside of carers yeah, yeah. so yep. you know if I, they know i'm there every yep. wednesday yep. um That's even in some small way yep. I, th- I think i found that beneficial because i you know i could get a reaction from someone that was yep. more often than not you know just sitting quietly struggling with dementia yep. um so that's that's an area i'd like to work more in with my design is Dementia sensory gardens. and dementia gardens to, uh, only in the age side obviously nature plays a massive thing at the moment yeah i think there's it's more like the, the other end of that yeah both ends so yeah. i think there's more on the kids side of it i think like na- what nature play has done is really good but i think there's so much more that could be done um in a smaller area you know yeah so with dementia gardens so as an example yeah well so you've got dementia gardens for for elderly people or hospitals or or palliative care hospice sort of setups um in the same way i think there's more it's a bit trickier with kids um because they are totally unpredictable yep and you can put in something you think is really really cool and they'll love it and they'll just not even touch it and they'll go over and do that yep um Excuse me. So, yeah, I do love. I, I can't do everything, but yeah, if I could pick, I'd be doing a, a mixture of those two areas with my landscape design, um, and, and, and predominantly doing the, the design, yeah, um, and construction. Well, so start of last year, I I got my garden chosen to build it in Melbourne. So when you say you got it chosen, so, what does that mean? Yeah, that's a good question. How long have you got? I don't have to be anywhere to one thirty. So you oh, cool. Know. All right. DK might get hungry. So we'll go day by day. Yeah. No, so there's three categories of gardens at the Garden Show in Melbourne. There's Achievable Gardens, which is for students, for yep. horticulture. I've, I've, I, so I went this year. So I saw that alley. It's a bit smaller, like a three metre by three metre kind of plot. Yeah. Yep. So there's those ones, which to me, now, after being there for four or five years, I actually take the most out of those ones yeah. because there's no rules and no one's playing no it budget. safe. Yep. Yeah, the bud. I, I believe they have to. They learn they about budgeting under. for the yep. thing and everything. But because they're not doing it 
as a business to yep. get work or play it safe. It's you art. see some really cool stuff. Yeah, because it's it's the freedom. It's not like, will this get accepted? Will this get liked? It's just, exactly. this is my heart on my sleeve. Yeah, and there's just heaps. Yeah. Then you step up. There's and you know what's stupid? I didn't walk down there. Yeah, that's all right. Next year. Yeah. Um, yeah, then you've got the Boutique Gardens, which is run by Landscape Victoria. Yeah. That's the competition I entered. So you have to be a member of like MLSA, yep. LV. Yep. At the time, I wasn't a member of MLSA, but I, I've always been a member of Aldum, which yep. is like a national landscape designer. I saw that on your website. That was that. There was two logos. There was theirs and the yep. civil contractor or master no. builders. Oh, yeah, I've got to take that one off. Yep. No longer with There's them. a few websites. Anyway. There's a few website updates. Oh, that's I the think. old website. Yeah. you got to get on the new one. So <laughs> I'm just waiting for that to run out. You might want to redirect it. Yeah. Anyway, that's anyway, your business. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so I entered... Then you've got the full size. Um, display gardens which is a different game again so i entered my my design um the only brief is that you you keep within this 25 square meters um, there's a particular requirement that you have to use um, a certain amount of stock from particular sponsors <laughs> oh, okay plant wise which yep. is good because is this um publicly available information <laughs> You just dropping it? No, no. no. This, um, is what, this is what you get. This is all. This is interesting that. because there's, our audience would have there'd be a lot of South Australian landscapers that are going, oh wow, that's that's interesting. Because I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that you had. I thought you could. It's like if you want to enter, you pay your fees. You can stick a block of concrete there. Well, you probably can, but don't expect to come away with yeah anything. anything. Yeah, but I'm not sure whether or not because that part of the judging process is your initial design. Yeah, does it meet this, this, and this? Then you're judged against how well it's constructed. Against the design. Yep. Yeah. So if you if you this is why people get really confused at at garden shows. They'll walk up like your average punter will go in. They'll look at this garden, this garden, this garden. Three totally different gardens. Yeah. <clears throat> this one that's a bit weird. They don't quite understand it because they don't do landscape every day. Yep. Has won a gold medal, but the one they really like, which is really cool, and they could see at home, has nothing. Yeah. And they go, "Oh, that sucks." So that one's way better than that yeah. one, but. It's actually completely the opposite in that one they're judged against their brief, yep. um, quality of construction. Yep. But you could have an amazing looking garden, but it's actually nothing like what they said they were going to do. Yeah, because they made changes on on site. They, yeah, or weren't organised, or like yep. a supplier fell through, or something yep. like that. Um, so I spent half the time that year explaining that to people. They're like, "Oh, why didn't you win?" I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yes, they're all different, but." Yeah, I you know and I look, that's I had faults about, that I knew, and that's why I didn't yeah. do better than I did. But that's the tough thing about um, judged competition, same as any like bodybuilding or gymnastics or whatever. It's very much it's judged, and if you don't like it, maybe don't enter. Like if, yeah. I mean, you obviously don't have a chip on your shoulder about it, but no, no. If you can't deal with it, don't enter. Maybe be a runner and just <laughs> beat the time or whatever. Exactly. But. So getting back to sort of the timeline. So start of two thousand seventeen, still working three days a week. I had this looming garden build in March not getting along again probably 50% or more my fault with yeah. my manager um, I I basically said to Kate my current wife as I said earlier yep. um, I've had enough of this I can't something's going to give because yep. basically my mind 24-7 is thinking about this getting garden. this garden done And you, so you didn't have a business at this stage like Building, I, I was well. You did. Yeah, I was running as a sole trader, yeah. but it was not. It was a hobby, and basically. So you, your launch party of Space Capsule was building a garden. Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. So basically, I pulled over on the side of the road near the radio tower at Ranella. Most people know, and I rang her and I said, "I've had it." It was Friday afternoon, Friday afternoon, or whatever the last day of the week I was working. Rang Kate. Rang Kate and said, "I'm. I've had it. I'm quitting. I can't do it anymore." And which meant you didn't meet your agreement no because a year had passed so, so that's cool so quick that's job. A, yeah so, no okay now it's about getting it but it the, wasn't getting it through the wife no it was never that i was going to wait a year and quit because my intention was to build up like the opportunity was to get me qualified as a landscape designer and then do amazing things within the company oh within their company yeah who when i organized it they were all for it but by the time i finished it all Management the managers changes. had sailed yeah. you know and they didn't even know i was studying yeah Anyway, so she said, all right, just do it. So yeah. I drove back to the office, printed out the form and gave my resignation. Um, worked for another two weeks and then, yeah, then I was out on my own. So at that time, I'd also changed my business name from 
Space Capsule Landscape Design to Space Capsule Garden Co. So, so you changed that how long ago? Three? A while. Don't, yeah, don't question. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Man. Look, I would that, de- I'm definitely not one to sit here and criticise shit like that. I've got doors falling off cupboards. <laughs> I've got, I don't, not, most of our staff don't have business cards. It's fine. It, it's that whole right. ready fire aim. Just do it and then... Yeah, yeah. So sign writing costs money. Yep. So yeah, then I reset. At this time, I'd set up um, as a company trust. Um, really tried to get the business side of it set up properly so first. This is how long ago? So this is started last 2007, year. So this financial year that we're in now? No. The year so before. January so January 2007. Okay, so the calendar year, yep. Yeah, we'll get calendar. Yep. So set all that up because um, I thought if I start, if this goes well and I start rolling on, I'm never going to come back and set it up properly and I'll be, you know, tax I and all this had, is I just that, a nightmare. I did it wrong to start with. And yeah. yeah, we had to change to a company two years because we were earning too much. Yeah. Too, earning too much money and paper money. Yeah. But yeah, so then you had to create the company and... Yep. Yeah. So... You're right. Yeah, I'm glad I did that. So in that time, I still... I was basically still trading as Space Capsule Landscape Design. The only difference was that I wanted the company name to represent a broader range of things I do. Because, because you've got... Because I do vertical gardens, yep. I do design. I still do construction myself. Maintenance? Um, I've had enough of yeah. it. I, do a, I just still do a little bit, but yep. I don't want to do that. Yeah, Did that for too long. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess especially aged care maintenance, it's, it's different to high-end residential maintenance. Yeah. You yeah. probably killed yourself on it there. Oh, if yeah. If you'd gone down a different road, you might have loved it. Yep. But, but my enough. body doesn't love it anymore. So. Yeah. yeah, so uh, really the Space Capsule Garden Co. brand was just, it was done, but it was just sitting there. Yep. Um, and things just kept happening. So I went to Melbourne, did the garden, I like got third place, which was it's interesting because people say, "Why would you, why would you do it?" That's what a lot of people have asked me. Well, what do you get out of it? Um, I was I've always wanted to be a landscape designer first and foremost. I was doing a lot of maintenance in that job and in my fledging little startup. Yep. Um, I thought, well, work never comes knocking, so I entered that competition to really like become a landscape designer well it's a, it's a modern day yellow pages that isn't it like yeah rather than dumping x amount of dollars into an add-on or s- whatever yep you go do that what i've read on your website a hundred thousand people come through the show yeah you know they don't all live in victoria yep you can design in victoria if you really want to well that's yeah that's one of my one of my sort of goals but i'll get to that after yeah, but i've got a goals list thing yeah yeah and after i'll have to think about it um <laughs> yeah so did the garden and and i try to think back what were my intentions when i was doing it i mean i was I was a bit naive. Um, like we got a grant of six and a half thousand dollars, eight and a half thousand dollars. Sorry. Um, so I designed this amazing thing with no limits. I thought, yep. right, I'll just no thought. Go to the end and work back anyway. Like, well, try. I it took me three or four months to come up with the idea and refine it. So I, you know, I thought I want these awesome like cypress frames i want red brick walling i don't want cladding i want actual, legitimate yeah. brick laid yeah. i want decking i want this that so i spent ended up spending six grand on the timber yep um, there's grant. so there's the grant so yeah i mean it was i i i reckon i probably ended up spending about 15 grand of my own money on it yep. plus the time plus the time which i at the time i just wrote off because you didn't because you it weren't was, doing anything else anyway no so but and it was it, art for you yeah like it was it's a hobby that like the, you, yeah that, you enjoy your job that much, yes so it's it, not like it's a um a yeah. robotic job where yeah. Yeah. yeah that's then that's dangerous if you're in a if you're in a, any profession that's creative particularly yeah. it was the same when i used to do sound engineering yeah it's too easy if you enjoy it to do go over and above and people just take advantage of it constantly yeah, i think if you do anything creative and it's the same with dk you need to have some good structure around your rules so if, say as an employee these are the hours that you work and you kind of just have to do it because it's really easy to get caught up in it and go okay i'm going to do an extra here and do an extra there and yeah i think if you have those rules set down for what you do it's, and like even for us we do irrigation design which is creative it's not but it, it people value time differently when there's no physical product coming out it's just exactly. a piece of paper or even a digital document so if you say these are the rules this is how much i charge per hour and whatever else when you get asked you just have an answer rather than yes like oh no don't worry about it like and for me, learning to de- learning to quote landscape design has been the hardest part. Learning to quote it. Yeah, so designing's easy. Learning to quote it's... Designing's challenging, but learning to quote... Because I always, I always do like a... 
I'll go and visit a site. It's like, you want me to come around? I'll come and talk to you. Yep. I now have learned how much I used to give away and people just take it. Because like you do a sketch up and whatever else. Oh, I yeah, yeah, no more. And so just leave it there. Without being rude to people, I have to be really careful that I don't... Because yep. I'll stand there and I'll start reeling off this idea and that yep. idea. And then I start thinking of other ideas. I should be... Yeah, I've learned now to just... Don't give too much away because you never hear back because they've got the idea, they've gone straight to a contractor, yep. bypassed the design. And like you say, selling someone something. IP. It's like, yeah. So I now send a fee proposal. Um, and until recently, I was massively undercharging because I didn't value the worth of what I do. Yeah. Um, People that provide service, that's that service like that, it's same in um, Facebook ads and copywriting and all that part of the world they, there's a lot of undervaluing and then they, they'll they complain when they get beaten on price when you shouldn't even be competing on price like yeah. it, and if you do get beaten on price that's your that's your fault not the other person's fault because you've put yourself in a market where you're price driven Yeah. so if you've got your fee structures now which obviously you do you put it out there people want to use you because they want what's in here which I kind of envy that see I look at it from the other side because when I sell that yep. that's market driven it doesn't matter that like we can deliver it better or that we're we've got more stock or whatever. It's just a, it's a piece of plastic. Mm. Whereas with you, there is no other Tim. Exactly. Right? And it's so that's your fee structure, and that's why there's designers out there that would probably be ten times what you are. Exactly. But I guarantee you, they never complain when they lose on price. No. So. And I was at once told you can either in in life or in work, um, and this was actually more from a construction point of view, providing you getting the work. Um, you're reminding me to sit up straight. So no, I'm, my terrible back, posture. Just, for people that are actually watching the <laughs> podcast on YouTube, I destroyed my back somehow on Monday. So I'm just correcting No, I needed that. I feel better now. Posture. Yeah. Um, yeah, they said to basically, you either, com- uh, you either compete on price or you don't. So yeah. if you're competing on price and it's what you want to do, you're tendering for jobs. Then you better make sure you're, you're doing, doing this. Exactly. If you're getting work where you're, you've got a reputation... And price is sort of not irrelevant, but it's not. It's yeah, not at like the within, forefront if you're of everything. Within the market, if you're ten to twenty percent within market price, yeah, and that people want you, they're going to go with you. Yeah, and and most designers who are quite successful here and interstate would say, um, you know, it's all word of mouth. So as soon as yeah, so which, which can be digitally word of mouth now. It with can Instagram be yeah. So I'm all, yeah. I've obviously pushed that pretty hard with Instagram. I've now got. I sort of run three Instagram accounts now, yep. two Facebooks, but it's all part of the process. Mm-hmm. Um, we spoke earlier about tangents. I've totally forgotten where I was going with that. So we were talking about um, space capsule going to Melbourne. Yeah, you got your grant. All oh, right. Yes. Yes. So, so burned you, the money. Yep. So you you spent a lot of your own money. Yep. Your time wasn't an issue because you that, love it. Yeah. So what was the so then. I mean, can you pull some of that equity back out? Like, do those yeah. pieces of wood, are they in your backyard now? Or Yes, they're sitting there waiting. And they're so waiting. So, I'm wait- designed into, so you can't... <laughs> anyone listening to the podcast, if you want a design done, we've got this really good idea. Oh, yeah. I'm wa- you know, I'd love to see them in a like McLaren Vale cellar door or... Yeah, you know. it's that kind of... Oh, it's beautiful. Anyway, I know where I was going with that. Yep. So the biggest thing I learned, which is part of that question, why did I do it? So I still don't... I still can't give you one reason why I did it. What I learned out of it was, like throughout the process, I thought, right, what will I get back is if I could get it into a magazine, it'd be amazing. Uh, if I could like get on TV coverage, yep. it'd be amazing. So in the end, I like you know all of those things were more than I'd expected. So that year, Better Homes and Gardens featured every boutique garden with an interview. Yep. So I got that on the Friday night. Yep. Um, which has now led to I've done some work with those guys when they've done a film yep. shoot unit. So is are we coming up to next Friday? Is that the fourth of May? I reckon. Are we Fri- there yet? This Friday is the last Friday of the month. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, next Friday, Friday I believe it's going to air. We did like a job up at Birdwood Motor Museum. Yep. So like that's an ongoing relationship that I got out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, magazines here and there. So that that were your minimums. So you're you're like, if I get anything, if I get this or that or that. That's, yeah, I hadn't thought beyond that. But even that, even even if you didn't get that, like, and it's not for me to tell you what you want. I'd be like, the, the experience alone of doing it, yeah, and, and just getting and knowing that you've done it. Exactly. If you can't get enough just from that, then the rest of it doesn't. It's yeah, exactly. And here's a like, 
nervous little Tim like knows that he's got to rock up in nice clothes on judge the day before judging because better homes and gardens rock up then the you know ne- having never done an interview or anything on tv next minute the cavalcade rolls in and you know oh there's Joanna griggs cruising past yep. there's graham they're all just people man yeah and they're all really nice people yep. so as soon as i i sort of yeah put that aside i did that um which was cool because everyone who couldn't come over got to see it on the telly yep. um and that's pretty cool like to sit down with your family and yeah like, that's why dad wasn't here or you got kids yeah who said that that's but this is where that life here. lesson came in because that was great i got a buzz out of that because it was still showtime came to pack up we packed it all up got a bit nostalgic <laughs> crying in the car <laughs> well, driving home. I remember we went i went out the night before i had to drive home so yeah. i was staying in a caravan park yeah. on my own went out a bit late um, like last year oh the same as last year but yeah. we're not going to talk about that <laughs> actually there's a bit of a ew, a bit of a trend yeah uh, anyway yeah. but yeah drove home and it was like it was almost i almost felt upset driving home because it was suddenly all over mm-hmm. and i thought i got home i had a couple of jobs lined up which was good like landscape builds um but i just had this weird like um fear it was like a euphoric i mm. suppose that's the word um just I, a I get real that on fridays a real yeah well <laughs> it's a real downer and i and then because the high was so high the high was so high the dopamine and the adrenaline and yeah everything. but i and i had not thought one second past that garden job yep. being finished and i realized suddenly realized yes i had a few jobs going but none of them are as exciting as this was yep bottomed out big time um since spoke speaking to a few other people like there's this common condition that you know we call post mifcus depression yep. which yeah it's this huge high everyone's it's the most amazing thing and then then you've got to start again mm. um and you know i've had my own issues with with these problems mm-hmm. so it was only intensified when that happened um so the let as as i you know there'd be a little article in the messenger here or like went on did an interview at abc radio and that you know they were cool but i wasn't feeling it like it and then the final the final bit where i thought i gotta sort of address this is um months later a national magazine come out and i knew i was gonna get a feature in it because they did all the boutiques but finally came out and i was on the cover like the garden was on the cover of this national magazine went and bought two copies and yeah one that never gets open <laughs> like basketball cards yeah. uh and it was cool and i like i put it on instagram and but then it did nothing it really did nothing for me and that was what i had but it's all the same subconsciously garden. built this whole thing around <laughs> mm. um then i realized you know the i've got to set goals beyond as i spoke to you before we started yeah. we've, we, i'm we now learning to set goals before we started, before a we started secret filming. podcast yeah i have um, a lot of them usually it's after you just wear a mic all the time well i actually kind of i've got one here anyway yeah um, yeah so um so you need to set goals yeah yeah big but big big goals. what helped me out was that while i was there so inica and the mlsa mafia came over yep. i like to think they drafted me so well that, it is the mlsa mafia isn't it because frank is the, <laughs> they all is the president. they all come over which was really nice because i'd never met inica or frank or any of the others so you weren't a member of mlsa no you've gone I'd, over there and, and meddled I, <laughs> and they're just like um so free membership <laughs> i didn't actually get it you i'm still waiting for like, no, what are you going to do for me yeah nah that's fine yeah. um because in the past, you know, I, I'd, I'd not really had anything to do with. I suppose it was still Lasso, was it? Did it used to be. Uh, I, I was out for a while, so it was, yeah, it was the Landscape Association of South Australia. Then it became the Master Landscapers of South yep, Australia, yep. and that's when Inika yep. and Frank and that kind of mafia that you described is now. That's good mafia. In charge. Right? Well, there's there's no bad mafia, is there? No. So then, um, yeah. So that's just interesting you, that we were, mean, you, we were one street off Ligon Street. You came into the landscape market through a different door yes. to most people, and that's why you would have been like, oh yeah, hi. Like, well, as a student when I was studying, I became aware of. The Australian Institute of Landscape Designers yep. and Managers, the tongue twister, yep. um, through a student competition. And that was to try and, if you won that, you went to Chelsea with Charlie Albone um, from Selling Houses. <laughs> I was like, I'm going, I'm going. Well, at the time, I was like, 
hmm, it's a familiar name, but I'm not sure who it is. Yeah. Anyways, went through that. Made it to the final of that, but didn't get picked. Yeah. But that was cool because, like, Charlie said on the day to all five of us, um, like, we did all these competitions, had to build a little show garden, all this. He said on the day, like, no matter who comes over, here's my number, here's my email, ring me anytime. Got a question like, or you want to just... Bit of a mentor. Yep. Just, yeah. Which I've, yeah, which we've kept that relationship to and today, which And at the time, really you good. probably didn't understand the, the value of yeah. that. Yeah. But he also said... Show gardens, once you do them, are um, dangerously addictive. Yeah. Don't know what it is. Yep. Um, yeah, and yeah, it's true. So I've since done... Well, you can't... Like, at what you do, you can't compete anywhere else. No. You know, you can't... Like, I can't just you, you go and build. You the Landscape Awards, but it's different. Yeah. You know, they're judged in their environment, and it's client-driven. This is completely your IP, your brain, your construction. Yeah, and then it's gone. All you in the same area, the same conditions, the same time frames, the same weather, like everything. Yeah. So, so it's your Olympics, really. It is. So I, I, I know a lot of people talk about mentors, and I wouldn't say he's been a mentor, but he's been a constant connection that I, I've flicked a few designs through to him just for his thoughts. Yep. He always replies. Yep. Often, like every time we've been to Melbourne, we've caught up at the show and whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, there's another a designer in Melbourne that I would consider a mentor. He, yep. he wouldn't. Yeah. But, but he's just the most because important. he's too modest. He's too modest. Yeah. Um, That's the perfect mentor. So. He'd say he's, he's a friend. Uh, yeah. So he's basically like... So he's a member of Aldom as well. He... Every time I see him or speak to him or on Messenger or, or whatever, he's always got... You know these people you, you go to talk to and they've always got a slightly different... Um, he's not opinionated. He's got They've got a slightly different way of thinking than you and it just clicks. So and you're he, watching the world here and he's just... And he the, says, what about, right. yeah, what yeah. about if you just yeah. do, and that's whether it's, um, his experience. Yeah. But whether it's about business, garden design, yeah, that car, yeah. like if whatever we're talking about, it, we just seem to click like that. And he's the one that's really got me to think about my worth as a designer. Um, yeah. because he's purely a landscape designer too. Yeah. So no construction. No. So he uses companies over in, yeah. over in Melbourne. So yeah, it's an interesting differential. Um, the, I was, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was, I guess your, um, I guess your design to installation ratio. Like, is that a, a thing you're conscious of, or you just design it? And if they, you 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 try to convert to an install for every one, or you're not too um, concerned. If I could, every day my how I want that to happen changes. So yeah. there'll be weeks where I think, <laughs> nah, I so just want to work. <laughs> I just want to work by myself. Um, yep. with a constructor but basically do the design and then they do it jeez he's yawning over there you're yeah. right <laughs> that's what happens like every day of my life people just uh, I think DK's just sick of listening to me yeah no, nah, that's not right. you don't worry okay. it's just, oh now I want to yawn no but, because yeah that's bad come on DK <laughs> the, ne- the next day I'll get really inspired and I'll think right I'm going to take over the world no what happens is I go to Victoria and I, I talk to people that have got mm. design and construct where, so if you design for whatever price it is yeah. compared to the actual job, yeah, in a way you can, if that. yeah, in a way you can really think, you know, even just if you, if you're purchasing plants mm-hmm. for a, for a job, even the, the margin in on that, you think, well, why would I hand that over? Mm-hmm. Um, so then I think, well, ideally I'm not sure what I'm thinking today, but but what's your end? So you, you, know, so you nice. don't have an end. Got, like you don't you don't look at it now and go at fifty. I want a team of ten. I want to run three states. Like no. you haven't thought that far ahead. I have, but it, like I say, it changes. Yeah. So, um, you know, the what I keep coming back to is I would like to have control over the builds because I'm yeah. a bit like that that's not I, a bad thing though I think most designers I mean I, I did a site visit the other day and the designers still hand like that like tree orientation and everything yeah, yeah, like exactly. crazy and I'm talking like yeah to watch that in action is insane if I if I was working if a job came in tomorrow and I designed it um, like I've handed a few designs to different people and, and recommended them to the client mm-hmm. it is sad that quite often they don't end up um, there'll be changes that aren't yours no it's or... more it's more disappointing when they they just don't end up going ahead with anything so you've oh the client just doesn't they go it. for whatever reason they just yeah. do Too something else or, or 
Yeah, well... <coughs> do you talk to your clients at design stage about what their budget is around the installation? No. No. I, that's a tricky one because as soon as... I leave that because as soon as budget and money comes into it, it automatically just compromises the possibilities. Yep. Not saying that I'll come and design the Taj Mahal for you yep. and it's going to have all imported this and that. But as soon as you start talking about money yep. um, and uh, what's your budget, you're already like putting a shadow over what's possible. Because that might be the reason, you know, like to be, I guess, con- con- contradictory to that. I had a meeting with a client this morning who was quoting a massive, like it's ridiculous. It's like a 5,000 square meter design yeah and the irrigation components in the tens of thousands of dollars and i said has any like has anyone talked well he actually brought it up and said i don't know that the designers discussed the budget and i was like well how did they design it without knowing a budget so i'm like the, i'm the opposite to you i'm going well you you need a budget but you're talking about it from a yeah like, we'll say- you, you can't be an artist it's like i guess van gogh like you can only use those eight colors like, yeah but what, you but know, you see i i like to think that like there's a skill in establishing that with a client yep. without directly saying how much do you have to spend. Yep. Like I, I'm, I've learned to like. There's ways of finding out what they want to spend on it or what they're expecting, mm. and then designing consciously for that. You know, yep. like not not just completely ignoring it yep. and going and picking the most expensive like pavers, the most yep. expensive this, this, and this. Um, I like to think that within, you know, once the design's underway, that's when you start. We start talking about. Okay, so this is, you know, to build this might this area might you might be looking in this range, but if you want to get more bang for buck, maybe yep. we'll we'll use smaller plants here, and then you could use a, you know, and you can through that you can kind of get whatever, the budget. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah money. You don't just, like just asking. I, wonder if I mean, there's times I will. I wonder if that's tied different. to your fee structure and your value as well. Like yeah. you don't like you personally don't want to talk about money eat at all. Like you you know how much you need to to earn and you know like because it's just like i don't want to talk about money yep because i had um our backyard design and the first thing i said is this is how much money i'm going to spend design it around that but yeah. i still want all this included but if someone <laughs> says that to me that's great as well but you'd rather then you know but you don't like, want to ask it no but i also know that if you say that you're pretty it's more than likely that you're ready to go yep um and it's likely that this will get built one way or another. That's right. And you will just keep working through. There's people, so what do you there's think there's design's getting done that they're just like, yeah, we'll get a design done and then they just don't do it? Well, maybe they just go cold on the idea. That, I mean, I've had, my, I've had my design for six months. We've done nothing. Yeah. So That's it. Other ones, that's life and business and kids. You hear and, other stories that like someone will pull out a design from years ago and just, oh, we've, we've come into some money. Um, there you go. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It's really complicated. I, I As I work well predominantly by myself you know you kind of just learn your own way of doing things and every client's different you just kind of you end up being a bit of a um like psychologist, a counselor, a counselor. For, for a backyard or a front yard as you you end up particularly like if you've got a couple we got told this very early in study they're like you go to a look at a job husband and wife um husband husband wife wife yep. any combination yep. Um, joint house owners, whatever. Guarantee you, there was going to be a moment in there where a disagreement's going to come. Up. And I stand there often, and an argument just breaks out in front of me. You're like, oh, she wants this. Oh, he thinks we should do this. And rather than, well, we're having that problem with my backyard. <laughs> See, they around the, the swimming pool. Okay, which is a sixty to eighty thousand dollar differential in. Oh yeah, okay. in the conversation. So, so you want it on the roof? No, um, I just want a pool. She doesn't want one. Huh. So basically, I'm standing there trying to be the taking in what they're saying, and more often than not, you can find a compromise. Yeah. Not then and there. You say, "Look, give me some time to yeah, let me look this. at it." And I think, "Well, he wants this. Why does he want it? Why doesn't she want it?" And yeah, because one of the things we learnt real early on studying is they pulled up a whole of photos of gardens. This is like week one of study. Yep. And they said, "What do you think of this garden? What do you think? You know?" And then they pull up another one. Someone would go, oh, I don't like that. And they'd say, why don't you like it? And they'd be, oh, I just, it's just not, I don't like it. Yep. And they said, the difference between now and when you, if we can, if we teach you correctly and when you complete landscape design, you'll be able to not only look at something and know why you do or don't like it, but you'll be able to critically analyze why. Rather than just saying, I don't like it. Yeah, so I mean, I'll be sitting out, we'll be out 
at a yeah, restaurant or yeah. something and I'll just be drifting like my eyes just drift off and look at like even just like a build like this building yeah. across the road like understanding the architecture why is that plant why surviving? exactly yeah. why is that planted there why is the DK get some footage there. you know <laughs> why is there an eave on yep. the southern side when there's no eave yeah anyway yeah so I'll and it's da- it's, it's very it's not very green is it for someone who is reasonably um, obsessive like it makes it worse because my whole life is it you remember the Terminator when he's walking around and it shows his view and he's like a red light will go onto someone and yeah. say oh there's Clint yeah. he's this old yeah. don't kill him yeah. you know, there's DK he's alright yeah. that's what my life looks like yeah. but with like oh that plant's doing well yeah. oh I don't like that car yeah. why don't I like that car yeah. so I lay in bed at night just I, can't, I cannot switch off mm. um, which comes back to if you really enjoy your job there's never really a knockoff. Yeah, I, I get that. I'm laying there wondering why I chose. Why, what on earth did I choose that in that design? Mm. Dumb. <laughs> you know? You can take it out, I guess. Um, so you went to Melbourne. Yep. Uh, you've done two gardens. Two gardens. One was under your banner, so Space Capsule. And did yep. you have uh, people help you with the, the building? Yeah, so there? that's where a lot of the money went. So I. Yep, so you engaged them as contractors. I found a couple of guys, yep. carpenters. Yep amazing yep. <clears throat> did the whole thing did all the carpentry for me they had a a brickie who came in and did all the brickwork yep um it's funny i sort of got i i asked someone who'd done a garden before if he'd build this one for me and he's like oh, i can't he didn't say why turned out he was one of the judges yep. um he put me onto someone else and this guy was too busy he put me onto someone else as soon as he said email and he goes i'll oh, contact this guy he i think he was on the block last year that's yep. all the email said i'm like radio so i ring this guy really enthusiastic young guy so him and he's like i've got a i work with another guy all the time um we'll work for 50 bucks an hour which is unheard of yep um and yeah we basically because they wanted to do the garden oh yeah they're just enthusiastic yeah. about that and that they, they'd never really done they do a lot of um, indoor carpentry so yep. it was a good experience yeah to, yep. so we did everything um together and then they took off to a buck show that was, that was the deadline. We had four days with them. Because they had to go. They had to go. So we absolutely, dr- like, I, yeah, I've never, it was amazing. And just dropped that four days at 50 bucks an hour in one night on a bug show. Yeah, then I had a few days to do all the plants, all the finishing, all the mulch, all the, the soiling, all the everything else. Yep. Um, no irrigation, I'm guessing, for these jobs. Nah, me with a hose. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was, that was that, yeah. And then this year I went over and worked with, um, Ross Ubergang, who's a Victorian designer, and yeah, there's a couple of guys from Japan. Well, there's a big crew on that one. There was so yeah. Joel from InStyle Gardens in Geelong. Yeah, he I've worked alongside him before because he's built numerous boutiques for his own business. Um, first year he got third, second year he got second. This year he didn't enter one. I'm like, oh no! Man, you jinxed yourself. You should have, yeah. In the bag. So he he was the main constructor for this huge Japanese garden that we did. Really different garden, designer's garden. Yep. Um. So I I wanted to be involved. I didn't get my. I, I entered a boutique that he was going to build for me, but it didn't get selected. So I thought, all right, I'll go back to my. Seeing as I don't want to be a constructor anymore, I'll go to Melbourne and be a constructor for nine days. Yep. So I worked with him couple other guys and heaps of volunteers six japanese visitors that yeah. were staying with us um we and that was japanese landscapers or japanese so volunteers. japanese landscape designer was yeah. a co-designer yeah um and then some other guys that were like one of them was a gardener He's like, yeah, we'll come. three translators <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> apparently there was a miscommunication throughout and we ended up with three translators but that was cool because they helped build the garden and that was just so much fun yeah um and another a Japanese girl and that was... is the whole concept of having a translator about no miscommunication? Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> I think they all heard there was a, like there was like a boardy trip oh, to Australia. Junket, okay. Yeah, a junket, yeah. Let's go. Um, so we, yeah, we would... So the at one point, I think there were six Japanese with us. Me, another guy, uh, Ross and his partner, all living in this little house in Footscray. Yep. Or near Footscray. Um, up at sort of six o'clock every morning... Just yep. go and work all day. I mean, some days we there's a couple of days we were there until sort of eleven at night. Um, we were a bit behind the eight ball, but then we'd come home, have tea. So we lived together in this mm. little 
pressure cooker yep. for like two weeks and it was amazing it was like, like there was no issues there was no issues yep. and like we developed this kind of hybrid japanese australian english it's called japanese yeah it's amazing and we're by you know from day one to day four it was almost like we were talking this fluent mm. it's been amazing so yeah i lived in japan for a year when i was 17 and i spoke that it's good isn't <laughs> that it? yeah. combination language for a long time because most japanese speak english or a decent amount of english because they're at such an advanced education yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> and so then it's reliant on the australians to like we we will i guess we are just like i'm not learning that language <laughs> let them learn our our language so it kind of comes like that well i, I was spent most of my time because he would come in my car every day with this guy called tucker right and he i kept telling him about bogans yeah he's like he's no idea eventually i looked it up i looked it up on google and it had like i don't know it was like a guy in a flannel out with yeah. a mullet and he, find, he goes ah chimpira and i'm like so right name for it He's like he's like Japanese bogans a chimpira. Yeah. Looks it up on his phone and it's like a it's like a slightly cooler bogan with a yeah. leather jacket and Yeah, they'd be like the guys that hang out in Harajuku and just wear whatever <laughs> they want and not care about the man. Basically. It's slightly different. But the funny thing about him was I I met Ross at his father's property near Horsham or in the Grampians. Um and him and he said, Oh, my dad'll be back in a minute. Um, with Tucker who's you know we're in this fully Australian outback scene I'm thinking Tucker like T-U-C-K-E uh, like, oh, yeah. Tucker must be one of his no, on mate, a you know, quad like, bike with a dog on the back and yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't know it was Tucker like yeah. Takashi yeah like, he's come back and I'm like oh you're Tucker yeah yeah. but yeah no great relationship great experience um, it's an unbelievable culture like I could live in Japan no worries it's so good so polite so mm. yeah so welcoming um you would have experienced that with these guys like no agenda there's no chip on the shoulder there's no nah. heroes it's just nice people willing to learn willing to listen willing to share willing to help because now i've got to save up some money because i want to go, go and visit it's great because it's through mes- country. messenger like we we do video calls still yeah like i just get suddenly get See, a video there's, call like, there's another Tokyo. example like ignore the medals ignore the experience ignore the whatever exactly. the human part of it you've met new people that you like and engage with who would be more than welcoming to yep. have you over and and I, I think that's the ultimate thing is that's what I get out of it now. Yeah. Um, and if you win something, that's a bonus. But, yeah. but some people bank everything on winning and then, which is insane. Yeah. And then they get extremely... But then you, you kind of, it's hard because it's not like we talked about sport, like with swimming, it's just you win or you lose. And you you go to win because you want to be the fastest. But from this, because it's a, a design and a judgment, you can't tie too much into winning, can you? Because no. it just depends on the day. Like it's... You know, and I said earlier that our garden we did this year was a designer's garden. Yep. So you would have seen it. It was it was completely different. You eat, in the main show garden section, you get a few that just play it safe. Yeah, they do what they do and they get work. Like yep. um, in certain, yeah, it's their which ad. is great. It's not there. You not get a, a nice garden. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That you'd get a nice garden. People come through from you know. About to say the effluent suburbs, the affluent <laughs> suburbs, <laughs> and they see they go. Oh yeah, I've thought about this person. I'll like, get that guy and that guy to yeah. come and have a look. Then there's the like uh, the ones that combine that with we want to have a bit basically of basically doing something different, and then whatever they do becomes kind of like a trend. Yep. Then there's the oddball like every year, every couple of years you'll get one that's so different, no one understands it. Cause people lo- like they really love it, or they'll be like, "What the hell? Where's all the like lush?" Like flowers that I can buy at Bunnings. Yeah. All the designers I spoke to and industry people and media, they're like, if that garden hadn't been there, um, it would have been like a lot of the same. Like it's... Well, this, I mean, it wasn't, I walked out of it this year and just went, like I'd never been. First year, not a designer, not a landscaper, general Joe Blow kind of dude. Like I walked around and went, meh. Like it what didn't excite me. And I spoke to a yeah. few guys from here and they're like, you get that every three or four years you'll get a year and you'll be like yeah and then you'll get it back next year and you'll be like oh my god like, yeah. look at that as if you know and you know what I think that comes back to this year so three three or four years ago it was all like structure was there with awesome plants yeah. right and then kind of more natural planting schemes started coming back again more natural timber um, less awesome urban sort of looking yeah. materials this year it almost went too far in that direction and there was just a lack of um, big bold yeah. 
um, structures. And I, I guarantee you, well, I won't guarantee you because I'm not doing it yet till the following year, it'll swing back again. Yep. It does every year. And yeah, I, I agree. It wasn't a wow year. Yeah. It was a, there's heaps of cool plant combos and bits and pieces, but for the average person, there's probably not that amazing. Um, and it didn't really, like, I wasn't there for the for that. I was there for the people. I wanted to meet yeah. the Melbourne landscape industry and understand where WaterPro fits in at some point ever or yep. who knows. I it's, mean, it is funny who walks past though. Yeah. The one, the five minutes I left my site last year to go and get a drink or something, I come back and they're like, you know, Dipper's just come past with his mum. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah. you just get... Well, you're in Melbourne, aren't you? Like, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, um, I was walking around like, oh, I know that person from TV. I've seen that person <laughs> before and it was, I mean, I was lucky I had Inika there with me and I don't think anyone else from Adelaide had got there at that point. So she was just like, this is this person, this is this person, this is this person. Is this the Thursday night? Yeah. See, this was the cocktail function that I... That I left, I before, said I am, I left before you. That I said I am not going something. to because I need to drive home yep. early the next morning. I remember you were the last person I said goodbye to. Yeah. You were at the door and I was like, you are right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we won't go there. But <laughs> what happened was I, I had my car in that day. Because of his current wife. I had yeah. my car in and at the museum where we can park... Because I thought, right, I won't go to that function because it's a good function, but it's late. Yep. doesn't have to be. Well, <laughs> it does. <laughs> but Ross, I get in there to see Ross, like have a look at the garden and that, you know, one last time, Thursday night. And he goes, are you going to the function? I'm like, uh, I can't really justify it. Anyway, within 15 minutes, we'd walked up to the, I think it's a Victorian nursery, I think, and he bought me a ticket. Yeah, we got back about 4 a.m. Mm. So the 6 a.m. departure never happened. But um, you know what? You the, only the regret the things you don't do. I, oh, yeah, so it was a good night. I mean, I just, um, by that stage, everyone's chilled out and he's no longer stressed. I found that that was the most, it was a very high profile room, not that it mattered. And everyone was relaxed and people that like you would assume don't usually let loose were letting loose. Yeah. So it enabled me to have, I guess, un fenced conversations yeah. and you know no one really cared it was just chillaxed and it was during the build there is just the tension you don't to talk to anyone no you do because because you're there so long every day the tension more just, like I'm not going to get an opportunity to oh break, nah you know. nah so you, it builds and builds and builds and it is just basically as soon as it's finished there's like silence yeah. except for his stomach rumbling over there <laughs> and uh, you couldn't have scripted that and then people some people are like oh, you know didn't quite get there, whatever. Some people are like, yes. But within a couple of hours, 90%, 95% of people were, like they might have gone over to the the local... The pump house. house the pump there, yes. or whatever it's called. Um, and have, have gone, you know what? It was awesome. We did it. Yeah. And then they chill from that moment on. Yeah. Well, I was only there for a night. I was there for 20 hours or 18 hours or something. Yeah. And I, I actually really enjoyed being in Melbourne. I haven't spent much time in Melbourne as an adult. So, um, mm. yeah, I was, I guess, a bit judgmental of... It as a city for whatever reason being a Adelaidean yeah but yeah it's, I can yeah, see yeah I've got a confession from being a see so where were you are you born Adelaide born yeah I'm Adelaide yeah. everything and where did you grow up south or north I grew up in Coromandel Valley okay so south um, yep yeah and it's, consla- it's like people consider it the country now Coromandel Valley <laughs> the right side of it yeah, Weird. yeah. but anyway um, yeah like growing up going to the crows and everything it was like I don't want to even go Victorian. to Victoria. I was just drilled, was drilled into me, not by my father. Well, a little bit by my father, but it's more just society, by people that's like, oh, Colin. And then the Grand Prix went. I was like, oh, I didn't really understand that. And you time. hate Melbourne even more because they yeah. stole the Grand Prix. Yeah, and then you think, oh, then they have that ad where that person's rolling that big ball of wool around the city. Remember that ad? Oh, my God. That and was they, recently. I, yeah, and I think, oh, it's pretentious, bloody Victorian. Yeah. And then, again, the, the beauty of age or whatever... Yeah, experience. And my frequently going back, like I've been back several times. Um, I love it. Yeah, I love the industry, the people, people the city. I agree. Yep. It was me. Um, it was that attitude that a lot of people here have. Yep. Um, for some stupid reason that. Yeah. Uh, we. I think. I think people kick hated a Vic. Melbourne. Remember kick a I remember Vic. kick a big. I think. <laughs> kick a Vic, not a big. Kick um. A Vic. Yeah. I. I think people. People, perhaps subconsciously would just they get a bit jealous of how vibrant Melbourne it's is you jump on a tram you go and look, we are as well 
we are in our own way. But for if, three months. But we need to. <laughs> once people stop trying to be Melbourne, yeah. Adelaide will have an identity. Yeah. So I think initially when they started doing a few laneway things, it was pure. In my opinion, it was like, well, it works in this Melbourne. Is, yeah, this is a, yeah. And now they've some of those have grown and sustain uh, sustain themselves, which is great. But I, I don't. Yeah. You, well, the fringe is us, and look, all of the like Lee Street and Pill Street and Wright Street, I think, like yeah. that, that's working exactly. You it's, know, because it's it's just us being us. You know, the the infrastructure is already there. It's not like we built new lanes for it. We've yeah. just put, you know. But what doesn't work is our. We can never be, or try to compare to the way that you live Melbourne CBD and there's Brunswick down Brunswick Street or there's like yep. Collingwood because we're not set up like that. It's just we all yeah. drive. Yep. Well, that's um, I looked it up when I was there to get to the show from my shitty hotel that I could only find this one hotel because it was what the Formula One, the whatever <laughs> yeah. else. It was it was twenty two minutes on a tram, twenty four minutes in an Uber, and twenty one minutes walking. Yeah, that's the traffic on that Thursday night or whatever it was. I'm like, yeah. this is insane. Like a tram, which was free, gets me there the same time as an Uber or walking. Like it's mm. just that that density of the city, and then the because it was so busy, even the trams were, were held up. But I just if I could talk about that, if you've got a minute about yeah. like what is Adelaide's identity? Um, I have a real concern with the way. Obviously, development is happening in our suburbs, certain As suburbs. As in outer suburbs? No. so Or like halving blocks? What, and what, well, yeah. What's really got me thinking about it is Kate's grandma recently moved, we moved into a retirement village. Um, so we had to clean the house up and they've sold the house to pay for the aged care. Yep. It's in Morfittville. So it's picture Morfittville race course as one big of, square. Not far out of Adelaide. Yep. You've got Bray Street that runs down one side. Yep. You've got... Um, the race course and Morfitt Road. There's a big square which is Morfittville right through to Morfitt Road. There was a lot of housing trust from probably the 60s, but there was also a lot of these houses like hers, which was beautiful sandstone frontage. You know, you get a you get the odd like Art Deco curved yep. windows. You get quite a set back a bit from the road. Yeah, it's um, always in the middle of the block kind of thing. Yeah, but. You drive through there now, where the housing trust has been sold off, um, you'll get like straight across the road from her house, there is like an unhealthy amount of, I don't I wouldn't even call them houses. You yep. could walk from roof to roof, there is yep. no eaves. Yep. The front yard, which is coming back to landscaping, yeah. at best it's a piece of two by three. artificial turf and a driveway, um, which means... I'll get back to the identity in a minute, but if you're going to live in a house like that, like for someone in there, they might get up, make a coffee, open the kitchen window, looking at a fence, yep. go and watch some today or sunrise if you want to waste, you know, yep. brain cells. Walk through the garage without going outside into their car. Garage opens, drive out to work, undercroft at work, go into work, never even come outside, right? Yep. Clearly that's not healthy. Where the identity comes into it, um, you drive through there. That suburb is becoming a what's the word? Like a it's like you've thrown like step every from, bad step sort of wives. Like every house looks the same. And yeah, but not in a not in a grand way. Like every it's like you threw every kind of cheap building um, style into a washing machine mm. and then just spat it all over the pavement. Um, but that's that's not going to change. Like exactly. That's... But you in ten years' time, like Morfittville, which was I don't use that as an example, was I suppose a working class, um, you know, maybe two or three children family through the sixties and seventies. Yeah. Um, the frontages of these houses, there's zero protection on them, mm. um, because it's in an area that they want to make denser. You go to somewhere like Colonel Light Gardens, good luck. Mm. That's Colonel Light Gardens that's has the, an identity. That's council driven, though. It is, but Colonel Light Gardens has an identity because they it's they want to protect and they it. Protect yeah. it. Yep. I know that it all comes down to the fact that you can make more money splitting a block. Full stop. Right. Everyone's making money on that, though. Even the council, they get two rates instead of one. Exactly. But who's? What bothers me is if you drive down a street, you could either be in Morfittville, Mitchell Park. You could that Morfittville could be Blake's Crossing. Blake's it's Crossing. That's high. Exactly. What so, is what is that? You you walk through older suburbs economics. and they have it is, but do you, do you agree it's kind of a? I don't care. 
No, I know. But I understand where you're coming from. And I think that it, as a, um, you're like, for you, it's a, it's an issue because you, you, you see it through those eyes that you talked about before where you're like, I haven't seen a nice open thing or I haven't seen history being retained for like four kilometers. What's going on? Like this exactly. is killing me because it's, cause it, like you feed off of it. I, I look at it. I, I, it doesn't even bother. Like I wouldn't have even thought about it. And I'd look at the other side and go, "How come I can't subdivide my block in kernel like gardens?" But I can in, <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? Because I look at the economics of it and go, "Well, is it, what's is it harming anyone?" I, I, I also look at it from a stormwater catchment point of view, which is a concern that yep. we're not we don't have any um, green space for that water to go, and it creates flooding issues. And I don't think they're thinking about that side of it. Yep. Um. So those areas that you just described, all that roof space, you know, traditionally you'd have. So forty or thirty percent of a block had roof over it. The rest was not hard sca- hardscape. It was like gr- massive back lawn and um, and uh, plants. Sorry, I've just got some idiot shaking his head outside the window. If you're wondering why I pause then, um, so all that rain would go into those areas. Now it's not. So it's going going into the stormwater pipes. So the roads were designed not to handle that. So that yep. those there's more than just the. You're more into the logistical. Well, it's not like there, there's more cars on the road. So there's more cars in the car parks. There's more rubber being. Yep. You know, put into our waterways. There's more stormwater blocking our pipes. There's less water to go to the houses, so an irrigation system has to be designed differently. And showers, like you know, the water saving things, not as much about saving water as restricting the amount of water going into the house because your neighbours using the same. Like traditionally, there was one house with one shower. Now there's two houses with two showers yes. each. Yep. So there's four showers on the same block, all coming off the same whatever site. So I look at it differently. But and do you know I'd what I you. think all that stemmed from? See, so yeah, I. I could do another whole podcast. Right? No, 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 I, on no we can, like, we talked about it actually, like a lot of the guests that I've had after the woods, I'm like, you know, we went out for lunch and talked about heaps more stuff or, you know, um, we should do a follow-up. So there's not... Is this the air your grievances moment? What's that? Like, are we about to do air your grievances? Mine? No, mine. It sounds like it. Like, yeah, we are. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's go that way. So this, coming back to landscaping, it, it's all about that. What we just talked about. I think about. this is helping you discover what you really want. No, yeah. Because it's... you seem like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Well, this is what's my current... Tim's beef, yep. right? <laughs> so we make this a weekly segment. <laughs> right. I think the term low maintenance should be banned yep. from... A lot of people are going to hate this. Yep. When I go to a person's house... And we're talking about it. It's looking cool. I think I'm starting to feel where they're coming from. And then they say, but I want it to be all low maintenance because I don't have time to do anything. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's basically like, even though they can't see it in my eye at that moment, there's this like, there's a monkey that's come up and he's just repeatedly stabbing me in the heart because yeah. I'm thinking, right, in the same way that putting a budget on some things will affect its outcome, yeah. putting low maintenance on top of it. Yeah. If I had enough work, as soon as that word came out, I'd say, excuse me, I just got to get something from my car and I wouldn't come back. And that's, I think that's going to be the commercial viability for you versus following your, like really being true to your heart. Um, because the, I mean, low mate, like for me, my backyard, I, there's things I want in my backyard because I've got three kids and I want them to have fun. I want them to be able to play and all that kind of thing. But I also, and it's not that I don't have the time because everyone uses that as an excuse. I don't give a shit about it. Yeah. enough to spend the time and so I can see your point of view as an artist like if, if you're is like you look at it from a no, painting I, point of view yeah. why would you spend all your time designing all this and no one cares yeah but I look at it deeper in that the term low maintenance I still think the, it went bad when water restrictions kicked in yeah. right? water restrictions it was around the time I got into landscaping sort mm. of early 2000s 2005 was it yeah six was hard they brought in the rainwater tank thing that was july 1st when they did the tanks and yep I mean, so over the, ne- for us, but. over the next few years this is where the class thing comes the supposed non-class the class divide comes in over the next few years suburbs um so i live in shadow park for example suburbs like that which are, you know it's a nice area to live but it's not um it's not kensington or whatever yep. norwood lower class suburbs Stop all right water. they just gave up and to this it's been like 13 years right. and, and they haven't people, started up again everything's still dead yeah. um because 
And from that point, I was the term low maintenance come in. You look at any house on real estate. Oh, it's got a low maintenance garden, regardless mm. of whether it does or not. It's become this term. Like, and it's a positive term in their views. It's positive. Yeah. And then, but I think the outcome for a lot of people, I want a low maintenance garden. Okay, a square of paving out the back with a little border of just whatever was on sale. Mm. They may not realise it, but for a, very, a comparable cost, mm. they, this is not landscape design even, they could have had something which they'd be a lot happier about. They'd feel good in that space, yep. but they don't know because they wanted low maintenance. And then all of a sudden they realise they got this in summer, they don't even go out in the backyard. Well, because... it's even, I mean, a lot of it's not even up to the person that lives in the house. A lot of it's yeah. the builder going house and land package, $299,000 and the budget for the landscaping, which is going to shit you even more, is three grand for the whole house. Exactly. And it's not designed. It's yeah. installed. So it's just, that's, I need a path around there. I want a, a metre garden bed on the fence. Actually, make it a metre and a half because mulch costs less than lawn. Yep. Plant directly in between it with X whatever because they will survive not being watered and no one will steal them. And like, I mean, it's, it's hard. Like, what do you, you can't, I guess you can try and fight that fight Oh, I'll be fighting that fight, you know but I, mean? I know I can never win it's that fight. Ma- yeah, like but you think about the like, the, oh, but yeah. they don't even think about it. See, like, I want to work for people because coming back to it's a creative work. I like seeing people enjoying what I do. It's not I'm lodging a tax return for you. Here's some money. Yeah, it's I'm trying to build something, design something that that becomes whether part you realize of their family. Like, over yeah, it. and they grow with it and yep. they care about it. Ideally, if all the clients were along that line low maintenance would never be mentioned because they might have a deeper understanding that it doesn't this again it's that putting a cost on something at the start it's it's just yeah it, that's what really frustrates me yeah I know I guess after understanding that I can tell I now I understand more around why you wouldn't ask for what what their budget is I and I get like you kind of like you'll get a gut feeling for it because they might mention something or they'll say oh some people will just tell you yeah yeah it's, it's tricky. So, in an ideal world, your clients will come to you. So, and this will, that'll be something that you build over a time. You'll get that reputation as like, you know, if you want a garden done X, Y, or Z, then Space Capsule is the one for you. Because, and that, look, the, one of the best things that I ever did here was to create my twelve values. And then, if and people like you want to know what it's like to do with Water Pro, go watch a video. If you can't handle me swearing, maybe I'm not for you. <laughs> if you're going to treat my stuff like shit, we're not for you. You know, if all these are things, so you might have that set of rules in your head which you haven't actually created, and you'll go, okay, I don't do in low maintenance. I only do this. I only do this. I only do this. But you have to have the nuts to go out and publicly put that on paper yeah, exactly. or on your website and deal with the consequences. So for for me, I was at peace with where WaterPro was at the time. Um, financially, it wasn't a concern because ultimately this provides me with enough money to do what I need to do. It's not about money now. It's just about winning. So once I had to lay my rules down, I was like, all right, now I'm ready. So that might be a thing. Like yeah, definitely. Once you've got your rules down, you're like, all right, it looks like the cars are getting moved. I've got like a mass exodus. Either that or the mutiny. My whole team just walked out. <laughs> um, That's right. I want to take a quick break. Yeah, yeah, sure. Get some under the drink. Um, are you are you right battery-wise and stuff at the moment, DK? Yeah, yeah. Not He's not hungry. Yeah. Cool. You can go get a snack if you need to. I just need to use the ladies' room. What do you got? Oh, sugar biscuit, mate. Yeah. Good natural sugars. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I do. I obviously. Alright, let's just break out on what was just said. <laughs> um, I was saying, welcome back. But you know it's fake because that banana was not eaten a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just like do like a real good Casey Nix. Like, oh. And we're wearing different shirts. <laughs> oh, now I'm wearing this shirt. This is awkward. Um, no, I was just saying. Um, I can see that you're going in a direction. Like I can see that where you're headed, and I think that eventually you'll probably use your platform of awareness in what you're doing to maybe do something bigger and championing that low maintenance garden. Or um... I don't need to champion it. I just need to make. I just want to make people aware that what they're asking for, they actually understand why what it is they're asking for. Maybe not not that they've heard. You could have like not just Tim's beef, but like <laughs> Tim, Tim's definitions. Yeah. Yeah, there's an Instagram. You know what? You want to stamp? Right. For anyone listening, I'm eating a banana. I'm sorry. Um, you could just do a, an Instagram card that says low maintenance. You know how they do like the, the definition? A shitty garden. <laughs> and like list out 
your definition of low maintenance. Yeah. Um, you know, it it'll be quite. I saw a um a timber company the other day that make um furniture like this kind of table. Yeah. And they were they unleashed on natural edge timber. Like they made their position so clear that it's it's disgusting. It's it'll be one year in fashion, and you hate the fact. That As in, like it. a big red gum slab. Yeah, bar. but like done nicely. Like yeah. not like Matt Irving. Shout out to Matt Irving who <laughs> loves like rustic tables. Like I'm talking, what I think they're called Maraback or Mar- Marabek furniture, and even like it's a like a really nice bedside table, but the front of each of the edges like it's this smooth and it's this timber. It's not yeah. red gum. It's that kind of slightly um, natural edge. And they just made their position really clear. Now, that's going to alienate 20 or 30% of their clients. But they're not their clients anyway because they're going to feel uncomfortable and sick. So, you know, exactly. one of the reasons why you're probably so, today I want to do this, tomorrow I want to do this, is because you're not doing exactly what you want every day. That's because right. Because you haven't set the rules and then reinforced them because you're either haven't thought to do it or you're too scared of losing clients because you want to make sure you're doing the, the, you still have to bring in an income for you and your family or whatever but i think if you set those rules and did stupid stuff like that maybe not that but on instagram going low budget or low maintenance means this low budget means this people are going to go oh well you know you kind of pre-qualify your clients see i always had this not worked out for me i like to think that um my other interest probably would have been psychology because i'm fascinated so when i said to you about your money thing like like you don't want to charge because like you would have then thought oh, okay maybe there is some kind of tie there let's yeah it's, it's, <laughs> it's constantly it. ticking over like and there's i did, yeah i i think there's a real there's plenty of people doing a good job what so that one of my questions was what did you want to be when you grew up so was this was it ever at any point ever in your head about psychology or no. or music? Like so, you talked a bit about playing music. Was that were you in a band or it was just? Uh, well, so in year ten, we, you do your, you, some guy comes in, they do a test, yeah. and they go, "Oh, here's three professions." <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's you, so bad. Did you ever do that? I don't know. I, I don't remember doing it. But right, so I, I, I have a bad memory of my whole past. I drank, the, I've drank too much alcohol. In my see, life. at the time, I was heavily into music. Yeah. So, and one of them came back as. <laughs> It's a highly uh, educated job. This one. One of them came back as a lighting engineer, yep. which was kind of. I could see that their test was pretty obviously picked up that I enjoyed live music. Right? <laughs> I see, there's there's this algorithm and yeah, it's yeah. fed into a, a jobs we don't have enough people for currently. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Good. You're going to be a nurse. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why? We don't have enough. Well, you're gonna, you might be good at Bunnings because there's a new one opening up. <laughs> yeah, government funded um, study. <laughs> And the other, I don't remember the third. The second one was tattoo artist. No shit. Right? Do you have any tattoos? No. No. Okay. But clean skin. Funny, funny uh, thing is, obviously, I was my other big interest at that time was art. So this test was pretty straightforward. Oh my god! I wonder what the guy that did those tests was told at school. You become someone. You become the guy that. Like I just like learning about people's futures. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's all. You're going to be a tester. Yep. So that's that was again. I had no like in your ten. It was like oh, let's we'll just be in bands and we'll get famous. You know, delusions of grandeur. And it's probably the best time ever for that now. But yeah, you know, well, yeah, exactly. There. I mean, back it, in my day, it wasn't. You know, no, you had to know a record. It was label MySpace. And, yeah, was, well, even before that. I mean, yeah. Did you? You're too young. He's like, he's like, what's MySpace? Do you remember Napster? <laughs> How old are you? I had the first DK? Napster. 25. He's 25. Dude. Yeah. I know he looks old. Have you heard of Napster? Mm, yeah. I where it all began watched, there. He would have watched... Um, Kazar oh, no, because you're a Justin Timberlake. Kazar. Oh, that was years later. Yeah. See, I remember down... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was just thinking... Of the, I remember the, buying music online. Yeah, that's what I was going through. <laughs> I remember buying music through Napster. It was actually free for some reason. Yeah. You download it and it just... They never sent um, it. But the first song... Music. Like, my first... Uh, my first CD I bought was the prodigy's breathe single and i had no music prior to that well i remember downloading my first song on Nap- napster it? i can't remember what the song was but i remember it was three megabytes so yeah. it's crap quality yeah um i said it in the morning went to school or whatever yeah come back come back and it was like up to 2.98 megabytes see i reckon little did i realize that every time dial up dropped out i had it i'd set it to reconnect oh. so when the parents would get the phone bill it would have like who made 50 calls on this day because I'd set, set school, music to download, me. it would drop out, and then... Wee- yeah. Yep, here it goes again. I reckon my, my data was used in images more than than audio, but okay. that's another story. Um, so do you have so, any... Yeah, that's, 
Didn't have any idea. I so, fell into landscaping. And then it's and, and then it's and, worked and out. It's, and it's something you're passionate about. Yeah, and I think that's where the the, the art music connection probably relates to the you, like you've got a creative personality. So it could have ended up being, I don't know, it would have been outdoors. Do you think like it wasn't going to be well, tiling or like you're still creative? Like you like to come up with a concept and deliver a result that's artistic. Yeah, yeah. I still see it very much without trying to sound like I'm Picasso or something. Or yeah. prick, have you ever seen Picasso? It's another one again. Look that paving look, is Bricasso? No, look up Bricasso. He's quite an unusual painter. Probably um, don't look it up on your work computer. Now. Oh, no, we're cool, man. My boss is really good with all that stuff. Yeah. So, um, so do you have any staff working for you, for you or it's just you the, at the moment? No, so I've sort of, you know, when I was doing more construction, I had a few people help me here and there, nothing official. Um, I've now got someone helping me with a bit more of the admin side, which has totally taken a bit of the weight off. Do you, don't, do you hate admin? No, I it's just hate line with your money stuff. Once I'm doing it, yeah, I'm fine. But so it's like going to the dentist or the gym. I don't mind the dentist. I spend a lot of money at the dentist. Yeah, you do have nice teeth. Thanks, Thanks for people that um, are listening. Two lots of braces. That's what yeah, I'm oh, no, sure. Yeah. Anyway, no, I um, how do we get onto the dentist? Because I, you said that admin is something that yeah. once you're getting into it, you're okay. But so by the time I've gotten up, gone out, and done whatever I'm doing all day, the fun stuff. Well, not even like quoting's okay. Uh, doing vertical gardens here, oh, doing this cool. there, blah blah blah. By the time I get home, um, like I now understand the value that like there's kids there that are growing up. I don't want to go and I can't sit down and start working until they all go to bed. But then how old are your kids? Uh, six and three. Yeah, so and they're old enough to go. Yeah, I want you to do this now. So, but if I sit it out and spend some time with those with them in the evening, it's then very hard. To kick back into work mode once they go to bed. I get that, man. My my um, my best hours are really early, like kind of six till eleven. Like you're you're experiencing the very best of me right oh, now. Nice. But the like once I've gone home and spent some time with my family and then had dinner and bath and bed and all that, the only thing I can really re-engage in is social media. Yeah. Um, because I can sit down, either like lie in bed and do it, or sit on the lounge and do it, and just you know, Celeste will be watching something about couples that can't meet people on the real world so they go on an island and do it topless but oh yeah you know, see that's so been, I, i'm usually sitting with that in the peripheral and yeah but that's been good for me because no <laughs> there's because, hope for you for your second wife no because the tv <laughs> is more often than not on some show that you were sort of talking about yeah that like that's when i go this sucks so I would i'll get, go do work i'll go yeah, do work so yeah. it's been good that every night there's some other i can't you know it anyway blows me away but I've, i'm sort of in the final stages of completing I've converted half my garage into my office now yep. finally got electricity hooked up so all my computers everything's out there now so and last night I sat out there till midnight just yep. doing work because once you get in the zone there's no distraction out there yeah it's great so. we I don't have an office space at home as such and I think that's something that I'm I'm lacking a space where I can go where there is no one else this room's good for it because because it's just it's just used coming here and just talk to well, you no close one the on door the and they just assume that you're doing something that's like, it's just it's just the way it's set up it's just assumed now do you do interviews like like to yourself like do you I ask do a actually, question and then walk around to no well nothing we do, we, not with walking I just move the microphones but the um I've got some audio where I'll record like my thoughts and just DK I'll upload it to SoundCloud or whatever and um and we're gonna probably fit out my car with cameras and <laughs> microphones so I can just spit fat rhymes oh yeah and, uh, and you know get them up on um whatever the latest platform the kids are listening to so when I did that just quickly when I did that um, this thing up at Birdwood with yeah, the Better yeah. Hunting Gardens so this is like for people that are interested in that that's, that's Friday Friday week May 4th May 4th channel well it tends TV. to get bumped to the second channel 7 now because of the footy but no one's watching football nah really. so anyway they so Jason and uh, I forget the guy's name that's, oh, that's going to go down really well for your next gig <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't work with the other guy. Jason's the landscaper. Yeah. And whatever the other guy that was on house rules. The carpenter. People, comment below. This anyway. guy. Yep. Anyway, they had to get in this car. They had a hire car. And basically drive up and down the main street of Birdwood looking at, um, talking about the area. You know, you see it on, the thing had about six GoPros strapped to it, this yep. car. Um, talking about what, oh, look, it's beautiful this and that because it's a whole episode about South Australia yeah but we were all waiting in the car park at the Motor Museum to, so they could get content <laughs> so 
So that it was that was quite interesting. So that when you come back Just to, to having your GoPro, yeah, and to hear what's not going to air. It's funny, like I don't know how much longer that's gonna gonna be the case. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of people that don't live in the world I live in in my head. Mm-hmm. And you have a lot of people that don't live in the world that you live in in your head. But yeah, I want to live in my head. No, it's yeah. You need it's like Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Remember the quote? Was it like oh, I can't remember? Anyway, it's like the Terminator. You want to live in my head? Like yeah, it's another. You need another. It's another world. But um, I can see like and look, we might do start doing a bit more of it. We did a site visit the other day where we might end up creating a garden show where it's not cut. It's just DK with a camera and me and another person with microphones and just walking around and talking about their garden for yep. half an hour or 22 minutes or whatever the standard is no ads up to YouTube and create a show where we're not trying to sell product we're not trying to do whatever it's just pure and I think that more and more of that I mean YouTube's become more and more and more of a platform that people mm. will watch over television yep. and you know you're bumped to the second channel and that second channel still got all the ads and you know really there's only how many minutes of content like what was it like that song one like The Voice you know they throw their hook ad and you have to watch an hour of stuff that strings together to be really six minutes of people singing yep. to watch the one thing that you can catch up on YouTube if you want to later anyway. Like it's, but I think... Tim's beef number two, we'll talk about another time, but yeah. it's the fact that on any of those singing shows, the actual performance might be like 30 seconds. Yeah. So they'll take a song that they could probably do quite well, but whoever rearranges it, butchers it, they have like three lines of an intro, then they'll cut to the chorus yeah, because um, and then the, the song's finished and it's like, well, that was, that was premature. Do you design your plans on paper before you get onto a computer? Uh, so I through through TAFE we learned CAD drawing and so on. Um, always ha- again back to art. I've always liked hand drawing. Yep. Um, learned a lot of computer drawing, SketchUp sort of stuff through TAFE. I've never liked drawings that look like they were drawn on a computer. Um, I think I think they're a bit harder for for people to understand. Like if if a client is looking at one that's that's drawn one it's more personal you know you, you're getting a design that's hasn't just been quickly thrown together <clears throat> with typical symbols and what have you having said that people don't want to think that they're paying me to sit there and color in for four hours yeah so n- what i do now is a super combo of lots of different mediums so yep. a media i use if i go to a site i'll i'll use my ipad or my iphone to take a million photographs um and then i will if it's going to be a like a proper plan i'll draw the the site up in a version of cad that i use which is like a just a garden specific one which is a lot cheaper so um, like a budget vector works not vector works but, but a budget ve- like it's, a, it's designed it was originally designed for um students in tafe but you can buy it yep uh, so I'll use that because that'll give me my I'm scaled I can up and down scale when I print and I know it's to scale um, but I'll always draw over it so my final uh, the plan will be it might be it'll always start out digital unless I'm just doing a quick concept for someone um, and then my 3D drawings and things I'll generally do a bit of I'll play around on like SketchUp or one of the others are you good on SketchUp? Um, yeah I I went off it for ages and now I've got it back and I'm loving it again. Yeah. But I don't. Again, I hate. I hate it. I really dislike seeing a finished pro, uh, project that someone's done, and it's just a really computerized 3D vision. A uh, yep. 3D vision. So what I'll generally do. It's a it's a much quicker way to get all your perspectives right than trying to draw them. If I'm doing a like a perspective or a section, I'll take. Again, I've already thought about this when I'm taking my initial photos as to what am I going to want to see. Like that's a big garden feature. Get towards the end of the process, and I can work out what's going to work on SketchUp. Get all my angles right, and then I'll use that, and I'll trace, and then from that point on, I'll hand draw over the whole thing. Yep. Because then it looks like my work, not just. Yeah, and it's yeah, I get that, and it's it's hard because, you know, in music, so much music can be made on a computer now, and it's still music, and it's still the talent of the person putting it together, and you know, but there's that. Um, I think it might be our generation and before. So probably, like, we're in a micro generation. I don't know if I've ever... I think I spoke to DK about it. pretty happy with my generation. We're in a micro generation, which is another generation smaller. I think it's like 77 to 84 or whatever. Um, it's where like X Appendix B. We went to school, went to primary school without computers and went to high school yeah. with computers. 
and then went to university or that time frame with mobile phones. So we've yep. we're not part of the X Y. What was it? anyway? Yeah, look I, it up. Um, <clears throat> so your I, I I read I print stuff out and I write on paper. So yep. we're hybrid. So yeah, what, the way exactly. you're designing is a hybrid of the generation that you've lived in. Yeah. It's, it doesn't take away anything from people that digitally design or no. hand design. It's just the way you're designing. And yeah, I get it works that. for me. Which might appeal to people that are older than you and your age. But then 20-year-olds, which I can't imagine too many 20-year-olds getting landscape design done, are going to look at it and be like, why didn't you just do this on a computer? Like, yeah, it's a, yeah. because that's all they've known. <clears throat> so... The so you said on iPad so your platform is Apple is that you just it is now so yeah, I've so gone all Apple see in high school it was Apple's and it was so uncool apparently so everyone went and then of course XP was pretty handy generally for many years yep so then I re- I resisted Apple when it came back I'm like, for many 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 years so you run an iPhone yep and an so iPad first thing I did was get well that's an iPad Pro so I can it's got the keyboard and I can also draw on it yep iPhone and I've got an iMac now, so yep. everything it's great because I take photos on site. I come home and they're already there. Yep. I can pull them into something if I want to draw on them. Yep. Yeah, so I've stuck to all Apple now, but yeah, I've only. It's funny. I've been really anti Apple for so long, and I'm only like in the last couple of days. I've been like, oh, I don't know, like, because we do so much media now, and I and I, I I haven't used Facebook and Instagram on an iPhone ever. But I'd be cu- actually that's not true. I might have used Facebook on an iPhone five back before Zucks made it. But no, I think he was alright back then. But um, <laughs> the he made it was. I just well, everyone calls him Zucks now, don't they? Yeah. Um, he I knows just more about you. I ha- I strong yeah. He wouldn't know more about me than anyone. <laughs> is I, is this the thumb thing? See, I had a, no no no. I'm just jump, <laughs> no, I'm where, anticipating. Where are we going? I'm anticipating right. So I had a Samsung. No, I was going to say that, that I, I don't know that the app works as well on my phone as it might on other phones. I struggle to um, to use the business side of Facebook yeah. on on a on a phone over a PC. But then I watch Gary V, like my hero, and he's only on his phone. So I'm like, he can't be engaging that well just on his phone if he's using a Samsung, which is not, or a Google Pixel or whatever. Yeah. So he's using an Apple. I'm like, oh, maybe I need to go down that path just to see if it interacts differently. You've got an iPhone. I'll just use yours for a little while. Anyway. Well, I look at it like any, like you look at how powerful an iPad is for anything like that. Pretty much anything I can do on there is exactly the same on there. Mm. It just looks more. I'm trying to get down to just this. Yeah. Like I'm holding a phone for anyone listening. I see. I want to go I don't, next one up. I don't want to, and I don't do design. So I'm running a business only. So, um, you know, posting videos. See, I can't post a Facebook video on mm. my phone. Right. Because you can't do the... You get the vintage the version. Captions. No, you can't upload like a, a four-minute video with a, with captions and you can't add a card. You know how we, we'll do a custom mm. a custom card? You can't add that image. Like there's a okay. few little things you can't yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so is is it able to be done on Apple? If so, I'm moving platforms off of Facebook, which is pretty crazy. Anyway. Anyway, that's... So, um, you, you're designing with that. Your client engages you. You go down there, take your photos, get it into get get it into your computer, digitally design, sketch over the top of, provide the client with a plan, and yeah, then well, they may or may not ask you to quote the install. Yes, but within that design process, um, there's there's back and forward because otherwise, it's too easy to miss. If you oh, so you don't just go sit down with your client and then no, nah. um, that's right, it. So, Two so weeks in, later, they get a plan. In, I'll see if I can do it in short. So I, you ring me up, I come over, I have a look at it, talk to you about what you, you know, I can get a lot from that, yep. providing I retain the information. <laughs> Which these days Which, is photos and... Yeah, and, um, and you know, other techniques of you know, writing what you did. and Anyway, um, I then work it out how long I think it's going to take because I'll always do a fixed price. Yep, that's fair. Which is I find, I feel uncomfortable working... At per an hour. indefinite hourly rate. No one's doing that, are they? Though? I don't think so. But don't think like, so. I mean, if I'm if I'm doing that, if I so much as take a phone call and walk out in the street for ten minutes, if I was you, I'd be pissed off because, well, fixed rate. It's up. It's my problem. That's right. So and they I, know where they that's, stand. And that's the difficulty is I have to work out exactly how long I think it's going to take me. Yeah. To be able to quote it. Yeah. You know, some of them you get totally wrong. Some of them you do quicker than you thought. But you know, I'll I'll develop. For a full plan, I'll probably, I usually write what the brief is. My understanding of what you want yep. will come with the 
fee proposal, so you still haven't paid anything. Ah, okay, cool. But so you go, this oh, okay. What, this is what I got from our meeting. So when he was here, he didn't listen at all because he thinks I'm single. He got the address wrong because he copied it from another one. Yep. Whereas, yep. in actual fact, if I if I get the brief right, that's the start of a, of a relationship, I suppose. Yep, we want to go ahead with it. So I'll usually come up with... See, when I come out, when I first finish studying, I, there's this idea of coming up with like two or three different options and then you pick one and then we go from there. Yep. But I quickly found that that's just... For me, that's just a waste of time. Whereas, because you end up churning out the three same kind of things to everyone. If you can figure out what you really want and then go to you with a pretty rough concept plan but with a couple of key things which I think you're going to really like, then I can basically, from then, I can draw up a draft which is... For how's, like that new, for a, how's that for a... I felt like we were in New York for a bit. Yeah, they're, they're like this. They're they're tooting at siren me. Now. No, they're tooting when they go past. Hey. Um, I get that all the time. But... Yeah, so then I'll draw up a draft and it's at that point I'd come and talk to you and say, look, this is basically where, where we're at. Yeah. I've just got to finalise it. Yeah. If Once I've drawn the final one up, if you then come back then and say, oh, actually... It's nothing like we I, thought. No, it shouldn't be because... They were part we of kind of process. agreed on it. Yeah. You, How you long does that process take? Is that like a four-week process or...? Uh, it, to be honest, that's probably my biggest downfall is... That's art, artistic is keeping, types, though. I that's, know. Um, like if you engage someone to paint your portrait, it's the same deal. It's, I haven't I haven't done that you know, lately. Well, no, my my dad had a painting done because because um, he was his in the father monarchy. passed away, and he had yeah, and he and he's also the king of England. Yeah, but no, he um his his dad left him some money in, yep. in the will, and and he wanted to do something positive with it, so he got a, a picture painted. So they also have to then estimate how long it's going to take them to <laughs> paint it. It's the same thing. Yeah, and they put their fee structure there, and if it's right, it's right, and if it's wrong, it's wrong, and you wear it on. And, you know, you take it as it is, but um, <laughs> you, I've watched a lot of YouTube on the last couple of days because I've been on my back trying to deal with my back. And Casey Neistat, who's a massive YouTuber, ridiculously successful, he took some money from Nike <laughs> to make some some um, three commercials. It's like same, same deal, creative had to make video, and him he did the first two, and then the last one he just rang his mate and he goes, "Oh, I've got like all this money from Nike." let's just get on a plane and fly somewhere and we'll keep flying until we run out of money <laughs> because that was just that's what that was fun for him and they were like when's it going to be ready when's it going to be ready and it went and you, you did i think it's just artistic types and it's it's funny i see it so much especially with the amount of people that we talk to and interview the people that are really artistic aren't necessarily that great at the admin or yeah. you know meeting with um I guess meeting client expectations or invoicing on time or chasing money. So you almost need not a business partner, but you need to be self aware enough to go like that's yeah. where the admin comes in and go, okay, Kate. you need to be pushed a bit. Yeah. So I remember um, a, a landscaper that we used to deal with. He was really good with that, and his wife was a crazy like, get it done. Why haven't you done this design? And it was almost like she was managing him because he needed to be managed because he was so artistic and flighty. He'd just be like, and he'd overcommit like because he was enjoying the design. He'd spend more time on it than oh, yeah. you know, and you'd be the same. You're like, it's not right. But you and you know your business manager would say you've spent six hours on it. It needs to be done. But you go like it's it's art. I can't. Yeah. You know, not in a pretentious way. It's art, but it's it's a, no. It's, it's not. It's not. It's all right, like right for that, me to say it about yeah. what you do. It's just you don't need to say it about what you do. But uh, yeah. yeah. And look, that's. I'll probably never do a job in my whole life that starts exactly on the minute and finishes on the minute that I've quoted it at. But yeah. if the outcome is what they want, mm. and and I've it's my business and I've made I haven't lost money well that's what I do mm -hmm. um, and I'm not with, with experience those those lines will get closer and closer and closer together so yeah. the, the lines between estimate and yeah and actual but and often in landscaping which is a, which is nice is when it's staged if someone's doing a reno we'll work on something um, and then once you know once a milestone in the build happens then we'll go to the next bit not Therefore, in smaller increments, um, it also gives people more... They get to know you better. They're not just paying you for one big thing. Because they've spent more one-on-one really like one -on -one time with you. Now we're ready to do this bit, or I've got another house, whatever. Mm. Mm. Are there any trends that you're starting to see appear in the industry or you, that you could forecast happening in the next couple of years in landscaping or landscape design? I, I forecast that um, low maintenance will still be popular. Yeah, for, uh, forever. <clears throat> forever. As they come up with oh, 
a new slogan for it. I feel like um, every year, trends as such in design are getting less obvious. Um, you know, like for a period of time, say for example, I'm just trying to think of one. So caught and still still being used still yep. nice in the right place but that came out and it, it didn't was, come it out of nowhere exploded. it became a thing yeah. and I, you know you can attribute that to like the block house rules yep. whatever happens on that. a lot of people see that and that's yep. where they maybe their only contact with or instagram yeah but and n- screens like those yeah yeah but i think laser cut screens like yeah exactly but now that now all those things have just become they haven't gone out. I think Something tri- new needs to come. Like, like what? Like grow walls are there. Like, what's going to be? Is it like roof gardens or? Yeah. Um, so, so see, like when I do vertical gardens, you'd think that came in the same way. It's been happening for ages, but people became aware of it all of a sudden. But a lot it's of not, that's probably attributed to the TV as well. Exactly. As much as I rag on TV, but it's not going to go away because there's no extra open space being created. It's just going to become part Total of the landscape, it. not yeah. just. A vertical garden is a vertical garden. Um, so yeah, trends and things. I mean, each year I've been to the garden show in interstate. You know, there's things that happen there that you see repeated. Certain, mm. and it, you know what? It's it's the suppliers that dictate the trends. So, if there's a blue stone that's now available or a new quarry, it's that's everywhere. Opened or because they're giving it to the samples designer. Are going yeah, and like you know, like for example, Bam Stone uh, in the Victoria. Quarry, yep awesome you see it all through melbourne you always have like on the pavements and they have a really big presence there every year um so you'll see a lot of their products awesome product now that's not a bad thing yeah it's great for business for them um and it also keeps the show looking good because people aren't just going to build a garden at the garden show and buy everything same with you got a lot of the sponsors give product to the yeah to get their product in the show yeah if you've got a new line of um, like outdoor furniture or yep. a new cladding or paver yep. that's what you like a smart designer yep. slash builder at the show that's what they're doing um, and it brings cost down provided with, it doesn't compromise their design exactly yeah and that's why um, so Warners provide a, cert, a lot of stock for Mifcus every year mm-hmm. um, what are Warners? Warner, sorry Warners is you know one of the bigger nurseries yep. in Australia so based in Melbourne plants. Yeah, so all of my... Which they've grown four million of for the, to be ready in two years kind of thing. Exactly. So for them, their interest in having a presence is that, like, they're the plant grower nursery. They provide, as far as I know, for a long time they've provided, I heard, some phenomenal figures as in for the, the amount of stock they the put dollars. at the show. But if you then think about trends in plants, or plants as they say, I say plants when I go to Victoria, but when I come home, I say like plants. Like Mul- Malvern and Malvern, Malvern. and Melbourne and Melbourne. Mul- Mul- yeah, and anyway. Cranburn, spelt the same as well, the... Well, Malvern Mul- here is Malvern there. I know, but oh. I had an argument with someone once that I said I said Cranburn, right? Yeah. And then, no, it's Cranburn. I said, well... I just said the same thing. I said, no, I said, well, is it the Burn Supremacy? What's that movie called? Yeah. It's spelled the same, I think. I hope so, because that was the whole crux of the argument. The English language is so anyway, hard. Yep. So, yeah, so trends, the plants, they're going to they're gonna push Goal, certain So ranges. they create trends. It's not... Yeah. They don't yeah. just... Trends don't really in gardens. So the, a landscape trend is manufacturer, supplier, whatever, landscape designer, design, acceptance, installation. Yes. Money back. The ones that Start again. disappear are the ones that came in with such a push that there wasn't a thought to how they then like work. Pitosperms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they—they they, they, they were massive because yeah. I guess they everyone was put. I think Jamie Jury was probably the one that was smashing that out. Yeah, but they're yeah they're tricky because they they can be susceptible to for a couple of reasons. You'll see they just all die. One will die. The yep. next. Yep. You can treat that if you get to it quick enough. But yeah. People don't, and then yep. it's game over because it's low maintenance. <laughs> apparently yeah apparently so yeah so that's plants materials yeah i you know small trends might evolve in the way they're used as in as in plant like it's like become tiles of ground cover or yeah that's something that's like pretty present at the growing moment. up instead of indoor plants yep. it's been huge um i wonder if we could put an in- indoor grow wall in here it's pretty light in here actually we'll talk about that after mm. but We'll fix up that one first. Okay. But we'll rip down that one, fix up that one, put a new one, rip out the lawn. We've got a lot yeah, to do. Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll do again, it while I, we're doing the sticker on your car. We'll do the sticker on your car. Yeah. 
Um, where was I? Yeah, so <laughs> these are you know these are trends, but I think things like in like these are all plants that your nana would add it looks, inside, looks that, and you wouldn't yeah. have even thought about it. Now yeah. they're like like that there devil's ivy. Yeah, what's well, a form of? Is it. that the green that it's meant to be? There's three. So there's another one. The most common ones are dark green with a most like a it's like a so green the one gold. we're looking at quite a yellowy lime. Yeah, green. It's like, yeah, almost gold they call it. And then there's a third one that's sort of almost white. Yep. But yeah. The amount of stock that is now available wholesale yep. of these plants that 10 years ago, indoor plants hadn't... Again, it comes back to TV. Yep. Like the block, things like that. They'll put a, something in and bang. Yeah, everyone wants it. Fiddle leaf fig. And they're going Where to was, their local nursery and saying, can I buy this? Yeah. Show them the picture on their phone. So my bathroom at home is now turning into like a... I don't know if menagerie is the right word. A jungle of... What are they? Those glass things that they... Terrarium. Terrarium. It's yeah. just a big terrarium. It is. And you're the frog. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, yeah, so that's that's trend-wise. That's what I think. But it's it's up to designers and people to guide. Yeah. That yeah, trend, and not, not to just, just accept like this is a new paver and it's substandard. Yeah. So you run all your own socials. You mentioned before you've got multiple Instagrams and Facebooks. Is that, when you, is that for the business or multiple? Are you running other people's socials? or? Uh, I am now. So I cracked... <laughs> I cracked it at Facebook when I used to have it for personal use because it was just a waste of time. Yep. Resisted it, resisted it. And then as my business came back, I came back. I I was exactly the same. I used to go around telling people that Facebook is the demise of society and it's going to destroy everything. Which it is, but it's also handy for small business. So (laughs) Yeah, and big business. But So I've got... uh, I do have like my own profile, like with my name, but within that I've also got Walls of Eden, Facebook... That's right. So that's your and business, of your global business. And we'll yep. put all these handles underneath all of our stuff. And Space Capsule Garden Co. Yep. Um, as well. Yep. Just lost my train of thought for a minute. Um, so Walls of Eden, Space yes. Capsule. And then with you that... Your own brand? You're not trying to brand yourself at Not at, at the all? moment. Yep. Um, Do you own your, your name.com.au or anything? Quick DK, go buy Hang on. I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> Uh, sell, yeah, it so, sell it back to him in five years so then I've got Space Capsule Garden Co is yep. my Instagram which yep. automatically links straight through to Facebook and you okay so if you post on that Instagram Bang. you always tick that box yep. so you don't separate the content from Facebook no, and Instagram. my private Facebook is a public page so in that's a way, fine more like well, so when you're sharing your Instagram are you sharing it to your to your personal page yep and then so, from there I send it to either my Space Capsule Facebook page or my Walls of Eden page so you don't so your Instagram is that your personal Instagram no. no, Space Capsule. So Space Capsule Garden Co. is linked to Tim on yep. Facebook and then Tim... Then yeah, so picture it like if it was a flow down chart at the very top, Walls of Eden on the left, Space yep. Capsule, they're both Instagram. Yep. Every time I post, they both appear on my personal page. Yeah. Which family and friends and everyone... Better anyone reach can as well. See. Yeah, yeah more and organic. then from there, if it's, if it's a valuable something I, I want to, I then just flip share, share to my Space Capsule Facebook or my Walls of Eden. Okay. That's um, interesting. But now I also run, I've just taken over the Aldum social media. Yeah. Because um, when I was in, because I don't have enough to do with my running a business and having a life. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got elected to their national council when I was in Melbourne. Mm. That just happened. <clears throat> yep. So now I've taken over marketing and social media to try and. So deep down, you could contract that. Like it's. Oh, that's voluntary. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it's to help out. But it's it's great. Like it's a great tool for networking interstate, which is. So is Instagram your strongest platform? Obviously, that's what you're sharing to first. Yep. Quite visual. It is. Um, from a personal social media point of view, do you spend more time on Instagram than anything else? Yep. Yeah. I, I don't spend any... I won't say that. I have very little use for Facebook yep. personally. I couldn't care less yep. who's just checked into where. Yeah. Yep. But like anyone, it catches you out and you realize you've been looking at it. Like, oh, wow, Clint just... Um, Clint's got gastro in the <laughs> Novotel in Melbourne. Yeah. Oh, I might just, oh, yeah, that's funny. Uh, I'll never, I you'll never see a, me. I can do with a week of gastro, I think. you never see me like liking and sharing just pointless yeah. crap. Yep. Uh, like which cup fills up first? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is a good one, though. <laughs> see what I mean? It's, I've, I, I I've resist been, it, but I read thinking, it. I've been thinking, and that, that, I think that's the same for a lot of our content. I talked to DK about it. You know, people may not like it or share it, but they're watching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so you mentioned before you have a life. Um, do you have I'm stuff alive. that you do outside of work, or is it's pretty much just work and family at the moment? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I used to, I used to do a lot more music, um, and just recreation, I guess. But 
you know, a combination of... Like you're not a footy player or a cyclist nah. or a runner or a... Nah, yeah. like I used to ride my mountain bike around, not, you know, in normal clothes. And just trash stuff. And just, yeah. Like, just yeah. Do bunny hops over Do bunny and hops stuff. and like yeah. do skids and stuff. But That's exactly what I did. I had normal clothes, same yeah. deal, shorts, yep. But then before you know it, a couple of years have passed, I'm too focused on and work. And you bunny hop and snap your back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> or you go kick the footy with your son and realise your knee blows up the next day. Oh, How yeah. old we are? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not looking forward. To that. that was probably the last couple of days. As I mentioned, I've been lying down a lot because I hurt my back on Monday sitting on this chair, and um, yeah, it just makes you realise how old 34 and 35 is, which sounds ridiculously stupid to 50 year olds that are listening. But a lot of people I've, I've talked to, they're like, enjoy it to 40. I'm feeling like 35 because I'm overweight and I've treated my body with disrespect. I think my 40 is really 35. Like. Do you know what I mean? It's all relative. So, but if you were the only person on earth, you, there would be no one for you to compare it against. Uh, I'm comparing it against how I know I can feel. I know, so but... I've been 20 kilos lighter, and I'm in the last two years. Yeah. So that's what I'm comparing it to. Oh, not, okay. Not like, oh, that so I was going to go down into it, like thick a... Thick abs and... Interesting... Like, psychological... Psychological... If everyone was fatter than me, I'd be like a supermodel. Well, it's like the theory <laughs> of uh, relativity, isn't it? Oh, God. Let's not well, go too far into that. We'll lose everyone. my personal podcast. Yeah. I, th- I genuinely think you should start your own podcast and just have you sit there and talk. And you, you mentioned before you've got a um, background in sound engineering, so you've got no excuse I other can, than well, time. I, just, I need the panel with the sound effects, though. So you'd have people laughing and clapping and like, yeah, and like boing? Like, <laughs> like rave horn? <laughs> Air horn? That's over. Anyway. Um... So, do you, are you a reader? Do you have you read? Do you read? Are you a podcaster? Do you? Watch I'm a stuff reader, not a breeder. Yep. So, do you audio book or just you're... well? See again, because I resisted audio books. No, not audio books. Um, <laughs> I, I bought my first um, ebook as such. Oh, like I, a I finally came like a Kindle. No, no, it was just it's on here. Yeah. So yeah, but I had to buy it, and I only have a digital version of it, which the old me would go well. Same That's... with music. Why would I buy? Well, you could probably steal books. Oh, you can, but yeah. I'm, you know, I'm a grown up now. Yeah, you've got money. So you've got I finally, income. I finally bought this book, um, and I gradually read it. But um, so you're like on your first book still, on and off. So I just what have is it? it there. It's um, Elon Musk. Yep. So I thought well, that'd be an interesting, like, polarizing person, um, curious. Um, how did I end up buying that? Something got me thinking. I'm not reading it to become Elon Musk, but I thought it was because he's so different, yep. people love him and hate him. It's a, it's really interesting to hear from the point of view that it's written um, how he became to be like that. I haven't listened to any Musk books, and it's uh, someone mentioned it to me. Was it in one of the other podcasts? I reckon someone mentioned it, and I was like, I, was it you? Have you read it? <clears throat> but I was like, I haven't read it. Like It's just never interested me. Mm. And I think because he's so polar, polarizing, and like I have no desires to be a billionaire, I'm like, you know, it's a little bit too far away, but yep. obviously you're listening to it from a different reason. Um, yeah. So what's the long-term goal? You don't know, do you? I've got lots. I just have to pick the point in my life where I just go, right, this is it. So at the moment, you're kind of on cruise control. Um, in a way. With, with some direction, with a broader direction. I've got this constant feeling of, it's kind of like, I've rarely surfed in my life. I'd like to take up surfing if anyone's keen to teach me so i was anyway. gonna say a lot of our guests um are surfers it seems like in the like a lot some of the landscape market there's surfers um josh who was josh hooper who was our guest on six yeah he his former business partner and him split the business up because he just wanted to go surf cool so, old skater. He'd, so he'd gus play, so. i think gus is an actual surf instructor now. <laughs> okay so and it's not you're Coromandel, he's in oh, no, I'm Encounter not there Bay. Anymore, but oh, well, he's in Encounter Bay. It's not that far. No, but the reason I bring that up is I feel like I'm... If I could surf, um, I'm kind of surfing if the way... This is a really lame analogy. If the lame... <laughs> <laughs> Do you want another coffee, mate? Oh, another beer, thanks. Um, <laughs> if the wave was sort of my career, yep. I'm kind of zipping all over it, never going straight, but... I feel like I'm moving forward towards the tide towards it but at some point if I don't either turn around and get the hell out of the wave or I'm either going to break my neck when I hit the shore yeah. or the wave's just going to go you know what the um that Casey Neistat that I mentioned that I watched a lot of on the weekend what I call the weekend the two days I had off um he talks about life being a jungle and that you're Tarzan swinging from vine to vine and sometimes you need to let go of a vine 
and not be able to see the other vine before you can grab it and yep. other times you'll just be swinging from vine to vine so it might be from, you've gone from like you did the swing from vine to vine when you left your yep. aged care job and went to space capsule but then you're there might like i feel right now and this is more me being quite selfish and just like having my counseling session i need to let go of this vine being waterproof kent town yep. and work out where the other vine is so either stop working for a couple of months or open my second location and just go do it and just go i'm not waiting anymore because i've I've had that month of like like and two two days on the lounge or in bed yeah with nothing but your mind and then watching other successful people doing stuff on youtube which going down that path i was told for a good 12 months by this um inverted commas mentor yep you will never feel like you're getting anywhere or succeed until you quit your job and do this full time yeah in the same way as I was also told, if you're going to keep trying to build things on your own and design, you'll never become a designer. So the second I quit that job, yep. it was like a weight lifted off. So you've got another job to quit soon somewhere. I would quit something. Mm. Hopefully. I you want to design though. I just want to design. Yeah. And if you could, so have you, if you've got a number in your mind that you need to make, like it's not about money, I'm guessing for you, like you need to make enough money. So once you get to that point of achieving enough financial happiness from design, yep. you could just do that. Yeah, and, and let I, go, and you have to just be willing to let go of the control on the construction, or you. Oh, just, I, no, I know that I need to let go in of the construction, but I'd like, I'd still like to be involved. But That's not, what I mean. So your, yeah. it's your job. You get three quotes or whatever with the client. You choose with the client, and then you manage the job over the top of the landscape. Yeah, potentially. So, but aside from that, I've got an interest like in media. Yeah, I would love to go. Yeah, we'll probably be competing for TED Talks or something. TED Talks, but I. Uh, uh, I don't yeah. know. I think we we are definitely a different audience. Like our your 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 direction with regards to the happiness of the face of a building in my dominate whatever. <laughs> it's very yours is a, feels very pure. Or I don't know. I'm just trying to work out what I'm subconsciously thinking about while you're talking. Yeah. Can't work out whether or not it's your haircut, your logo. <laughs> your logo. I'm just not sure. You know, I said I'm just constantly I'm, always thinking about. I'm something. here with you, but I I'm don't have a haircut. Um, I was meant to get my haircut before this episode was recorded, but I haven't been able to walk properly. Yeah. So this is my. I don't know if you've got a Paw Patrol in your house at all. Yep. But this is my rider from Paw Patrol haircut before he hit puberty because <laughs> we got some of the newer just, ones and his voice changed. No, no this is just very pointy. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get a haircut before the next episode. But um, I get that. And I, I, I tangent off as well. It's, yeah. The other um, way I describe my, my business is sometimes when it's not going well, if you could like sum it up in like a meme or something, it would be me with a fire extinguisher putting out like a small paper fire. Yeah. Looking pretty happy with myself, and in the background be the four, the <laughs> four buildings of the apocalypse <laughs> flying through just flamethrowers. It's hard, man. It's like you, ne- and I don't think you'll ever feel comfortable that you're perfect at it. Um, I think running a business is like going to the gym. You have to do it every day, and you have to be consistent with your efforts. And you'll never be happy with how you look, and you'll never be able to lift as much as you want. But as long as you're continually improving it every single day, you're running a good business. So that's- and steroids. Well, steroids would probably be um, in, like venture capital and um, avoiding paying tax by opening offshore bank accounts yep. and stealing and being <laughs> dishonorable. So there's still steroids in yeah. business, but... But they don't have physical, um, direct physical yeah, complications. You don't, you don't, yeah, you don't... The business might die from it, though, from it taking too much of the illegal taxation, whatever. Anyway, so you mentioned before about your wave. Do you actually have a mantra or a saying that you continually come continually come back to in business or in your personal life? No, but here's the example of how I'm not normal. Is when you were asking me that question, I thought you were in my head. I'm thinking you were Where's talking he? about what's my like. So whenever <laughs> what's when your higher calling down the street, I'm waving <laughs> at people like this. Um, no, I I've See, always you're actually asking the question I'm asking you before I finish asking it. Like okay. you're thinking about where I'm going in your head. Yeah, but yeah. without, I don't want to be, I've always not wanted to be that person that just talks over people and doesn't listen. It's hard. It's a fine line. Now, so my wave. What's your well, mantra? Or what's your saying? Or what's your I don't quote? Have, I don't have a, no. a quote or a, a single thing. It's more, it's more about feel. Mm. If it, like if, it, if I'm doing well, it feels right and I'm happy with what I'm doing. I know when I'm not doing well, like with work. Um, yeah I mean it's tricky and a lot of people would 
just wouldn't admit that. Yeah. That sometimes it sucks. Mm-hmm. You know that. Fucking oath. And like I've only got me to deal with, but like that's I'll, hard as well. Like it's it's just, it's it's hard when you've got ten or twelve people that you worry yeah. about, but it's really really hard when you don't have anyone to talk to. Yeah. You know, I can go talk to to Matt or Chris and go, oh, I really feel uncomfortable about how this went down. What do you think? And they'll be like, dude, get over it. It's not that big exactly. a deal. So, when you're on your own, you're big, like my biggest critic's myself. Yeah. And I will, the same voice that in, I'm not a psychopath because I feel empathy for others. Yep. <laughs> which they reckon <laughs> this, is. This the, sounds like something you've looked into. No, I just. Are really, you a perfectionist? I, uh, I think I am, yeah. but sometimes. Yeah, yeah, on so reflection I'm not because like a perfectionist <laughs> doesn't just say yes no <laughs> there's like, no end point in anything no but what I was going to say is um, I'm sure I heard it on something yep. is that the, the common thread with most serial killers is that they don't feel empathy for others yep. it's a good way of weeding out your general serial killer of which I'm not because I so feel you're I a- feel empathy that you're sitting here <laughs> listening to me talk about so so if you were to become a serial killer, you would be in the rare category of empathetic serial killers. Yeah, like so you I, might kill someone and, and then, then send really money to their it. family because you felt bad about it. Yeah. But they had to die. Yeah. Because they ripped down a building in Morfittville and put two other buildings up. Precisely. Metaphorically. No. Um, is there anything that you want to plug at the moment? I haven't got any other questions for you. I guess just don't put in... Don't um, put in what? Low maintenance guns and... Oh, look, I think... Or don't call you if they want a low maintenance No, card. look, I... It, you know... Whether... I've, what's this guy's name in Russia? Vladimir Putin. No, not him. The one that's listening to your podcast. Well, I don't know. We'll call Could him, be Vladimir. We'll call him Vlad. We did say... We did suggest that it might be Vlad. Um, I don't even know if I can call him Vlad like Zucks. Like, I'm dead now. But, yeah. Well, I'll... Sir, Mr. Putin. I'll see if I can uh, sum it up in... I'm not going to plug anything in particular. Like... If someone wants to find me, they'll find me. Yep. Um, but I heard, a, if you've got a moment, I heard a uh, someone was asked on, on the ABC, which I watch frequently, yep. um, whether or not, the, or they posed the question, is the world a better place? Because for a lot of people, it's just, it feels like the world is just getting worse and worse, right? It's the best we've ever had it, man. Right, exactly. But it's how it's portrayed through the media, through a, a negative story, Generally, particularly online, mm-hmm. gets clickbait or... If you go down the wrong hole. Yep. Um, you know, it's rare that you see positive stories. You know, I can even remember when I used to... When I was a kid, at the end of the news, like nine news or whatever, <laughs> they'd do the weather. And I know they you're did the highlights. I, I know where no, you're going. I know where you're about to go. But then after the weather, there'd be some completely story that would never make it to air now yeah. about something good that happened in... Yep. Yeah, Norwood they cross to a school or a church. Yeah, or a, yeah. Now it's like, uh not only are they talking negative down the bottom, there's two marquees as well telling you other things. Pete, this person's died, whatever. Mm. So there's a perception that the world's far worse. But when you look at disease, exactly, hunger, like, like things like that, where we live, the world's improved. Electricity, water quality. So how that relates to landscape design? So why I, I, you think there's a connection? Like no matter how bad you feel about the way that landscaping is being treated or the or the building code or the way that blocks are being cut, we're still in a better place. We're in the best place we've ever been around design we're in a good, Yes, we're in a good position to to move it in a positive direction any time. There's, there's more designers in the market than I've ever seen. There's more design being done than I've ever seen. Like, if you are going to make a change in design, now is definitely the time. Like, it's... Yeah. You've got an audience now. Mm. So, thank you. I'm getting kicked out. I'm sure. No, I'd, I'm sure you've got a hundred things to talk about, but I'm very conscious of time. Yeah. Um, Instagram only lets you put one minute up. So I know. And Which minute are we choose? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a, a minute from the from this that you want to put up? One of them where you're not yawning. <laughs> or it's tum- tum- you know what? You you started way too much in this podcast, DK. Um, thank you for very much for coming in. Oh, um, right. We'll tag. We'll put all the social medias for all of your. That's going to be a fair bit of stuff, actually. Um, underneath There's all of our platforms. If anyone's got any questions for Tim around anything that we've talked about today, please feel free to comment below. Um, we can don't I add one thing to that. You can add whatever. I was you want. just going to say I should have said it before. Like, uh, like if you're a young designer starting out, coming out of TAFE or wherever, um, the hardest thing is finding people to reach out to. Yep. So 
whether you're like a student listening or someone highly experienced, like if I'm available to talk about anything, yep. so yep. I can, you know. I think that's really good. And uh, that's what I'm finding the industry is more it, it is, uh, turning to. It is, and I love that. Um, and you can thank the MLSA for that yep. as much as a lot of other associations. Um, but uh, that is that is a good thing to offer. And I think a lot of times when you see someone that's successful in their field, you, f- you feel reluctant to reach out because you're like, well, they're not going to want to talk to me or they're not going to want to hear from me. And in my experience, most of them are looking to pay their market or their industry back in some way, but they're not going to go put a sign up because that feels pretentious. So if yeah. someone does reach out to you and you're in a successful or perceived successful position, you know, you're running your own business, you don't have necessarily the same number of staff or the same amount of jobs, but you're running your own business, you're, you know, you pave your own way. If someone wants to reach out, of course you're going to say yes. Yep. Unless you are. A well, it's a benefit to me too because particularly if it was someone that's sort of relatively new like I'm, I haven't been in the industry very long but if it was someone you know, who just started a, in a job with a doing landscape design or trying to do their own thing like I like seeing what what people do this is why I like the achievable gardens because it's the before shot yeah yeah. I they, mean sometimes they just need direction yeah or yeah and you almost don't want to give but them too much careful direction you, yeah that's right because then they're you've ruined this they're they're so innocent like they believe you know we I, it's funny i get it here and we start the podcast again this is our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we get people come in here and they're like oh i really like that guy you know he really helped me with this and this and this and this i'm like the dude's a real asshole <laughs> you just haven't seen it yet and they're like no 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 i like him and they get along with him really well and then like three months in they're just like i hate it it's like the nurse or the the, the teacher that starts becoming a working in that market because they want to change the world and then a year and they're like I yeah. hate everyone who wants these kids <laughs> so I'm married to a teacher both my parents were teachers and both her parents were teachers yeah and did they get does do you think she still loves it as the day she did or no comment not on oh, her podcast that's for her to yeah her to decide I know it's chat is becoming more challenging hard so everyone's got an opinion private or public school public yeah. that's a bit, sometimes a bit easier I think. All right. All right, let's go change the world. Let's go change the world.